Presented by McGinty Gordon. Number 52, Anthony Batista is escorted by 
Miss Madeline Parker. She is escorted tonight by retired Navy grandfather Stephen Parker. Mr. Kwame Pierre. trainer for Brunswick High, and sibling, Mr. Evan Charles Ratliff is escorted by his mother and stepfather Donna and David Pinter and his brother Aaron Ratliff, an alumna of our uh, Brunswick High band. Isabella Renee Isabella Renee Smith, she is escorted by her parents, Christopher and Amy Smith. Ms. Yolanda Stallworth, she is escorted by her mother, Charlene Stallworth, and Sarah Kennedy, section leader. Ms. Alex Steffen, she is escorted by her mother, Sandy Steffen, and her sister, Ari Steffen. She's one of our drum majors. Miss Abby Sykes. She's escorted by her father, Bill Sykes. Miss Megan Thompson. She is escorted by her father, Jason Thompson, and her mother, Cheryl Thompson. Miss Caitlin Grover. She's escorted by her mother, Kelly Trimble. Mr. Nick Barella is escorted by his mother, Adriana Morales, and his father, Gabriel Barella. Ms. Caitlin Biston. She's escorted by her father, Don Biston. And now for our cheerleaders. Ms. Jaden Britt. She's escorted by her mom, Selena Britt, and her brother, Jason Britt. Mr. Leah Brown. She's escorted by her mom, Cecilia Brown, and her brother, Grayson Brown. Ms. Raja Boo. She's escorted by Marsha Myers Bowie. Richard Bowie Jr., Ruby Myers, Richard Bowie Sr., and Royal and Ricardo Bowie. Parents, grandparents, and brother. Ms. Miranda Goodman. She's escorted by her mom and dad, Brian and Amanda Goodman. Ms. Tamara Hicks. She's escorted by her mom, Michelle McLeod, Shoshana Hicks, her sister, and Caden, her nephew. Miss Millie Produsco. She's escorted by her parents and sister, Veronica Produsco, Francisco Produsco, and Nancy Produsco. Miss Sadie Wharton. She is escorted by Sharon and Joseph Morton, her parents. And now for the Neon Bright Blue Crew Seniors. Ro Nohees and Dylan Dixon. Shelby Griffiths and Hunter Bratcher. Sadie Pender and Deanna Patel. Trudy Patel and Jaden Powell. Madison McDonald and Kylie Simpson. And these are your mighty pirate seniors. A lot of applause, please.
The Georgia High School Association and its member schools have made a commitment to promote good sportsmanship by student athletes, coaches, Joining us for a senior night presented by McGinty Gordon, we come back to football action here on CSN. operate as a team of teams, full-time, part-time, in or out of uniform, because greatness can come from anywhere. And when you have the right teams in place, it comes from everywhere. Join us. Jimmy John's is using legit ingredients. For a sandwich? <laughs> and sliced veggies. <laughs> Wait, what's so funny? High quality ingredients. That's a problem! Jimmy John, the sandwich of sandwiches. And welcome back, everyone, to Glenn County Stadium. We're set for an exciting matchup between the Brunswick High School Pirates and the Effingham Rebels. I'm Anthony Serenata along with Coach Andre Clinch. Coach, to say this game is exciting is an understatement as tonight's uh, winner will be the state region champion. Yeah, region championship game, man. It's, it's, you can't wait for something like this. This is a big game. It's how you want to have your season can be concluded right here. So we're going to start with players to watch here. First, we're going to start with Mr. Nate Hayes. He's the quarterback here, junior quarterback, 5'9", 150 pounds, uh, laser arm, great talent, uh, great uh, instincts as well. Love watching this kid play, man. He's going to be a challenge for the, for the Pirates tonight. And the running back that's going to be the problem for the Pirates tonight is number 22, Jaden Evans, 5'8", uh, running back, junior running back. Uh, this gentleman right here runs with a heavy load, but he's a lot quicker than he looks. He'll make you miss, and he'll run over you. Uh, great, talented young man. Um, they got a one-two punch, but this is the guy. Hello? And now number seven, Lionel Twitty. Uh, I can't wait to watch what this guy does tonight. He has a lot of responsibility on his hands because Mr. Devin Smith, his, his uh, counterpart linebacker, uh, injured himself last year or last week or whatever. And uh, Lionel's going to get after it. He's going to get after it. He's been making plays all year. It's senior night. He's going to make plays. And, of course, last but not least, you guys know who it is, T.J. Mitchell, Mr. Touchdown Terry himself. Uh, we're looking for him to make plays tonight. Can't wait to see what he does. These are our players to watch for tonight. Absolutely, and then both teams led by head coaches there for the Pirates, Garrett Grady, and on the flip side for Effingham County Rebels, head coach John Ford. Both coaches are relatively new at the helm, but not a stranger to the program since both coaches had been on the uh, coaching coordinator side. So they're going to be going head to head tonight as tonight's winner goes on and takes the title here. So we're going to take a quick break. The beautiful moon overhead. And we'll be right back for tonight's big ball game here on CSN. Don't go away. None of us can see the future. But we reach towards it anyway. We might doubt whether we're good enough. Or brave enough. Or question whether we belong. But there's a place between now and the future where you realize you've always belonged. It's up here. Join, Join us. us. Rise above. Athletes often push their bodies to the limit, completing the route, making a pass, and achieving that game-winning touchdown. 
That's why our team of certified athletic trainers are on the sidelines of every football game for Glen County High Schools, Brantley County High School, McIntosh County Academy, and Frederica Academy. We provide preventative care, injury treatment, concussion management, and rehabilitation so athletes can stay off the bench and get in the game. Do you want to improve traffic? Do you want a new fire station? Do you want to help with stormwater management? Do you want better parks and recreation venues? How about a 44% return on your investment? Vote yes for SPLOST. Boss, Jimmy John's is a problem. Where does they using legit ingredients? High quality stuff. For a sandwich? <laughs> Premium meats. Let's make bread. Wait, what's up, funny? <laughs> High quality ingredients. That's a problem. That's not good. Jimmy John, the sandwich of sandwich. Welcome back, everyone, to Glen County Stadium for tonight's exciting ball game. I'm Anthony Serenano along with Coach Andre Clinch. It's the Pirates hosting the Rebels, and Coach Dre couldn't get any more exciting than this as both teams at midfield for tonight's coin toss, but region championships on the line tonight. It took us 10 weeks to get here, and we're using all 10 weeks to decide who's going to be number one. Yeah, this is what you wanted to come down to, right? One game, right? One game. And you got to put it all out there on the field. I mean, it's been a long season, a lot of attrition, uh, some injuries. Uh, but all of these teams know who they are now. They know where their identity is. They know who they want to be. And now it's time to go execute. A win tonight for Brunswick will make it a 22-game win streak. On the flip side, for the Rebels, they start off a little slow with two uh, games lost and then ended up going seven weeks with each week a win. And so let's take a look as Brunswick wins the toss. They defer, so they'll get the ball back in the second half. But, Coach, both teams with explosive, tough offenses. We'll see if Brunswick's defense is the big difference here. Yeah, defense is always key, man. You've heard the saying a thousand times, defense wins championships, right? This is a regional championship game. So both teams need to play their best on defensive side of the ball if they want to execute it. Brunswick's defense has been spectacular all year. Let's see if they can be strong tonight. Taking a look at some of the numbers for Brunswick, they explode on their offense at least 27 points. Or check that, that is for the Rebels, 27 points per game. For Brunswick, 37 points per game. And for Brunswick, just allowing under 12 points per game, whereas the Rebels, 13 points per game. So gets pretty close on both sides as the Rebels take the field here to play in between the bricks. And coach, when you got an opportunity to walk between those bricks tonight, probably brought back a lot of memories. Oh, absolutely, man. Being here in person, uh, seeing the field uh, with the turf and everything and the nice field house, it's a beautiful sight. And the, re the memories that I, I feel is uh, is uh, just joy. I mean, we've had a great, great life here in, in Brunswick, Georgia. Uh, good time growing up, and they, they do a good job taking care of these young men, just like they did when I was a kid. So love to see what they're doing here at Glen County. And the Pirates take the field in front of this excited home crowd. We had an opportunity to see the senior night festivities. We also had an opportunity to see homecoming, so it just comes full circle that we get an opportunity to, to see the seniors take the field and be presented with their parent. And it was just great to see all that. And then we'll be getting ready for football action here. And Coach, do you get the same nerves, the same butterflies on senior night as you do for opening night and for also homecoming? Uh, yes, if you don't have butterflies, I don't think you're really being a person. I mean, you got to have a little bit of butterflies. That, and once you get over that, it's time to play ball. So this is what you want to do. This is what you go to uh, the, 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 the early workouts for. This is what you go to all these practices for. All the film study is for games like this. There you see Coach John Ford in your screen. 7-2 and two overall record, 5-0 and oh in region. On the flip side for Brunswick, 5-0 and oh perfect. In region play, 9-0, and oh, perfect overall. For Brunswick, scoring about 225 points. For Effie, er, check that for Effingham County, 150 points. And on the flip side, 80 points allowed for Brunswick to Effingham County, 60 points. But again, we can ramble numbers off left and right, as we've seen, Coach, during this season. 
sometimes those numbers get thrown out the window because it's what's being played on the field that counts right now. Exactly. It doesn't matter what you did earlier in the year, last week. None of that matters. Tonight is the only night that matters. And I can't wait to see what happens out here on the field between the breaks. And the beautiful light show taking place to signal the kickoff to get things started. And we'll definitely have an opportunity to see the Rebels offense early on as we spotlighted quarterback Nate Hayes, the junior, 5'9", 150 pounds, is a threat not only throwing the ball, but has a great range and running as well. So we'll get a chance to see that. But here we go, getting ready for kickoff. Coach, buckle in. We should be in for a good one. All right, let's do it. Finner and the kicker set back to ready to get things started off here. We're glad you could join us here on the Continental Sports Network. I'm Anthony Serenano along with Coach Andre Clinch. And a nice roll and a bounce about the five yards. Wow, line, what a start. It's, hey, ball's loose. Oh, wow. That, I don't know where they that was. That. That was recovered by number seven, Lionel Twitty, who we also spotlighted early on. But I guess the uh, the ball was whistled dead. Yeah, the referee called the man down there. Uh, looks like the ball came out loose, but uh, referees called him down there. Maybe he stepped out of bounds there at the end. So we'll see where they spot the ball, but a great bounce. And looked like about the five yard line, he picked it up about the six, but then the loose ball by Mr. Twitty of Brunswick. And there was a flag on the field, so it's going to be holding against the Rebels. So that moves it all the way back to the three-yard line. Coach Dre, great start for the uh, for the Pirates here against the Rebels. Amazing start for the Pirates. A little bit of a mistake there by the young man. You see the coaches talking to him and trying to coach him up there. Uh, shouldn't have waited that long for the ball to go out. He thought the ball was going to go out of bounds there, but apparently uh, the ball has a mind of its own. So they got a rough uh, field position to start the game, but, you know, uh, great start for the Pirates. Rough start for Evgenham, but we'll see how it goes on right now. So again, spotlighting quarterback Nate Hayes comes in the ball game, playing all nine games, 1,433 yards in the air. And it's going to start off on the ground to get away. What a breakaway. Wide open, coach. He has to break through one more. Looks like another guy up front here past midfield and pushed out at the 40-yard line. Big run there by another player that we spotlighted. Number 22, Jaden Evans. Yeah, Jaden Evans, man, what a great job uh, keeping his uh, pad level low and, and breaking through the hole there. Uh, they ran a trap there and got, and got a lot of room. You see right here, uh, the guard pulls here and the guy falls down and then after that, it's just off to the races. He took that all the way to the 40 yard line. Big run, big play. And the Rebels come out of the shoot on fire, first and 10. Let's see what Nate oh. here does, throws it, and it oh. goes blocked and almost picked off by the Pirates. Yeah, the Pirates are definitely gonna be good on defense here. I mean, that was a rough play to start there, but good composure there, getting your passing lanes and getting the deflection on that pass there. You see the quarterback drop back for the pass here, and then he didn't see the linebacker sitting in the, wind, uh, in the wings there. So great play there by the Pirates, and uh, we're off to a good start here. Brings up second and 10 from the Pirates 40. Quarterback Hayes has to scramble. Throws a, we got a flag from the referee and this one goes into the end zone and it is caught by number three, Keon Wallace. But let's see where the flag and the call goes up against the Rebels. So that'll negate the play. Yeah, it was a hold there um, on the uh, left tackle there. Uh, the end got around him, and he tried to make a play there and just grabbed him. You can't do that. A lot of times linemen will see that happen and have to try to make a play there to save the quarterback there. But unfortunately, he calls his team a touchdown there. See him holding right there. That's where the flag was thrown. So we've seen just in these last couple of plays, them doing it from the ground and in the air, and this is what makes this Effingham offense so potent. Yeah, they're definitely a great offense there. They can they can light it up anytime they want to. Great throw by number seven on that throw. Second and a long 24. Gonna go with the run play, but the Pirates defense read it and probably no gain if there was a loss, maybe a one yard. Yeah, great tackle there by Lionel Twitty. We talked about him before the game. 
Uh, great job closing down and making a great play there. Tackle for loss for round 20. He's been in the backfield all year. So give it to our crunch stat team here at CSN. Coming in saying we're going to spotlight Mr. Twitty and so far he's made a big play here. So yeah, it brings up third and long. This time Hayes, little short pass, not really much made out of it. So we'll bring up fourth down and kicking team will come out for Effingham, but got to give the Pirates uh, credit. Their defense really stopping this potent offense. Yeah, great job by the Pirates. They, they, the screen uh, is set up there, but again, great play again by number seven again, all the way from the other side of the field. Lionel Twitty making a great play. I think he's playing with his head on fire right now. Love to see that. So it'll bring up fourth and 25. And that'll bring in the kicking squad. And back in the field there is Mitchell. And this one has some good hang time. Back at the 30 yard line. And here comes a swarm of Rebels here to stop the run play. Decent field position for the Pirates to start things off here in the first quarter. Great start to the game there. You see the fireworks early. A lot of nerves. You can tell everybody's a little bit on edge with this game. But now we're going to settle in and play some football. Great start for the Effingham team from uh, the fumble from the start of the game there until the long run. But uh, now we got ourselves a game. Now it's just a settle. Now we can settle down and play some football. 10-21 remaining in the opening quarter here. In to take the snap. Playing uh, all nine weeks. Jared Elkins with 1,235 yards passing. Gonna start off here with play action. Gonna go to the air, deep up the middle, and it's picked off by the Rebels, number one, that is Duff Davis. Yeah, great job Check by this. That Ashley Thompson. Yeah, Mr. Thompson there, great job there, uh, playing safety there. Um, didn't bite on the fake, stayed in the middle of the field, and just ran the route for the receiver. He took off and knew exactly where the receiver was going and made a great play. So for Elkins, that'll be his seventh interception of the season. And it was just on the first play of the drive and brings back life for the Rebels. It'll be first and 10 with the Rebels under lead of their quarterback, Nate Hayes. I'm sure Coach Garrett Grady was not the way it was intended here but it will give the Rebels an opportunity, a second chance here. Gonna go with the handoff, picking up some good yardage here on the run. Yeah, it's another great run by uh, Mr. Jay Nevins there. Uh, get behind his blockers and getting as much as he could. He got about six yards on that carry, great job. Yeah, a great six yard carry here, get behind a blocker. You see him put his hand on the back of the, the blocker to lead him a little bit to get the extra yards there. Great job by number 22, Jay Nevins. And with two top teams here going head to head, you wonder if your coach Garrett Grady, if those small that mistake like that could be the difference in the game. With still plenty of time in the game here to go, but could be one small mistake, just like that turnover, could lead to a score, and that could be the difference. Let's watch this one play back again. They threw a quick screen out to the receiver. Look at the hit right here. Wow! Whoa! Blowing a guy up there. Gotta love that. So Keon Wallace on the receiving end of that defense brings up third and one. The Rebels didn't do much in their opening drive, but with a turnover here, trying to capitalize, they picked up more than the one they needed with Evans running the ball up the middle. Yeah, great, another great job by number 22 Evans there. Uh, getting the first down, third and one. Uh, one yard to go, everybody crashes down. And, he does a great job getting behind his blockers getting the first down. This is a great offense, the way that they uh, run their offense. They spread you out as much as they possibly can to create space. And that space gives opportunities for big plays. Once again, Evans in the backfield behind the quarterback there. Makes you wonder if they're going to go back with him. That's the, the guessing game for the Pirates defense here. First and 10. And this time the quarterback keeper, but not pulled there. That's number 14, Gerald Quick. 
that's a great play there by the defensive end there. Uh, he's actually playing outside linebacker, uh, actually where Devin Smith plays. So great job here, stepping up, next man up, making a great play uh, when he needs to there. So we got a second along now. And the senior making a big play on senior night tonight. The nice pregame ceremony, the fans had an opportunity to honor all of the seniors and we wish them all well in their future endeavors. And we have whistles on the snap. Yeah, we got a false start here by the offense. Yeah, the receiver moved a little bit there at the, uh, the start of the snap when he saw the, the nickel corner walk up to, the, to put some pressure on them. So good job by the Pirates, man, keeping uh, the aggressiveness and uh, changing up the tempo and throwing these guys off their rhythm. Second year head coach, John Ford. So far seeing the penalty flags thrown out in the field go against his team. So we're bringing up second and 18. Ball at the 31 yard line, or check the 36 yard line. Quarterback Hayes, keeper to the 40, scrambles and brought down at the 41 yard line. On a second and long situation. Yeah, that was a designed quarterback run here. You see the quarterback take off here. And Towns did a great job of fighting off the block and making a tackle. We have a member of the Pirates team down on the turf there with 727 remaining, third and 13. Seeing some big action here. We're gonna take a quick break for some football action here on CSN. Don't go away, no score. Do you want to improve traffic? Do you want a new fire station? Do you want to help with stormwater management? Do you want better parks and recreation venues? How about a 44% return on your investment? Vote yes for Splost. We operate as a team of teams full-time, part-time, in or out of uniform. Because greatness can come from anywhere. And when you have the right teams in place, it comes from everywhere. Join us. And welcome back everyone to Glen County Stadium for tonight's telecast as the Pirates host the Rebels here on CSN. I'm Anthony Serenon along with Coach Andre Clinch. And Coach Clinch, you brought up a point here during the break Kind of the tempo of the game and possibly equates to the to the nerves the adrenaline going on tonight yeah both of these teams are clearly on edge a little bit you know it's going to take somebody to settle down um i hope that coach grady gets back to the run a little bit just to kind of get the guys to settle down and just remember that they are the pirates right they are playing at home unsportsmanlike conduct was the cause that pushed back the rebels even further third and 28 and that kind of Gives a little reasoning why during the break. We'll take a look at this, Coach. Yeah, it was a great run again by number 22, and Mr. 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 Hey, uh, Mr. Evans, rather. He um, he has a very low center of gravity. He's going to stay uh, between the tackles. Uh, haven't seen him run outside yet, but he's doing a great job of staying between the tackles and, and keeping his head up and making good cuts. Um, but that was third and super long, so we got a punt coming up right now. So we'll see a punt. But we did see John Ford, the head coach of the Rebels, animated during the break especially finding out the call was unsportsmanlike conduct. So I'm sure he's just reminding his boys, we got to keep our head in the game and not let this get away from us. Oh. At the 40 yard line and we got a big scrum there where it brings down the receiver there. And let's see where they spot it at. Man, this is a very physical game, ladies and gentlemen. I hope you're ready for tonight. This is a playoff game already. Playoffs aren't here, but we started right away. Region championship game, both teams are being very physical, getting after it. So we're going to see who wants it more and who also has the most composure. Let's take a look at some of our social media comments coming in, Coach. Let's go Pirates from Bradley Alexander. Let's go Pirates from Martha Brantley. And Kelly in the house. Go Pirates. Number 18, J. Dre from Lady K. So keep those comments coming. We'd love to share them here during the game. 
And the play brings up second and nine with a one-yard pickup. Quarterback J.R. Elkins under snap. Or in, check that in shotgun formation. The southpaw had an opportunity to see him in the first game of the year, and he has really come along and matured from that first game with the nerves to really just holding down the, the fort here as quarterback. Yeah, Going to go with the run play. Yeah, he's doing a great job uh, late in the season at quarterback. Uh, unfortunately, that last play, the, the interception, you know, he, he didn't really uh, make a great decision there. But this team, Effingham, is daring uh, the Pirates to throw the ball. I mean, they're putting everybody in the box and going one-on-one -on -one with all the receivers. Running the ball was the sophomore, William Heck. And again, repeat that sophomore, so he'll be back two more years. Elkins back. Nice pass down towards the sidelines. Caught nice move, Terry. Terry Mitchell. I think he's going to get out of there. It's going to be a touchdown. Terry Here Mitchell. We go. Hashtag, hashtag touchdown, touchdown, Terry. Terry. <laughs> this kid is special. We highlighted him before the game for a reason. Another, another great play by Terry Mitchell. Let's watch the play one more time. Elkins drops back and hits him on a comeback route. He makes this crazy move. Oh, look at that. Joystick move, and then after that, he's off to the races. You're not catching that kid. Great play. Touchdown, Terry. What a move. And another one. Look at this. And did we mention, Coach, he's, he's just a junior, so he'll be back again next year. The extra point attempt is good. And the Pirates take the 7-0 lead with 5-12 remaining, connecting from Elkins to touchdown Terry. Again, how can you not highlight a guy that has his own hashtag? 7-0 is the score. We'll be right back. Athletes often push their bodies to the limit, completing the route, making a pass, and achieving that game-winning touchdown. That's why our team of certified athletic trainers are on the sidelines of every football game for Glen County High Schools, Brantley County High School, McIntosh County Academy, and Frederica Academy. We provide preventative care, injury treatment, concussion management, and rehabilitation so athletes can stay off the bench and get in the game. Welcome back, everyone. It was a 56-yard touchdown pass from Elkins to Mitchell. And with 5-12, the Pirates take the lead. And again, uh, Coach Dre, you mentioned our uh, well statistician crew knew who to isolate in the first uh, pregame show here tonight. And uh, everyone that we mentioned has already had their hand in the uh, ball game so far. Yeah, it's a team effort, man. A lot of the guys out here making plays, and uh, we got a lot of guys out here from Bronson College School who make plays, but, you know, it takes the, everybody. And you know when you face a certain team and, and you got certain matchups, you know that certain guys have to step up because their number's going to be called. And uh, it's great to see what's happened so far for the Pirates and a great start to the game for both teams, actually. So a big 56-yard pass from J.R. Elkins to touchdown Terry. And with 5-12... The Rebels returning the kickoff here. And the Pirates special teams defense right there to stop the run, just shy of the 20-yard line. Coach, so far we've only been here the first quarter, but we've seen a lot of action so far. Oh, yeah, a lot of action going on right now. I mean, both teams are, uh, they want this game. They know how important this game is. You can tell by the way these guys are executing their plays. Um, Got to love what you're seeing. Look at the, the socials there. Yeah, we just saw the touch, hashtag touchdown Terry. The boy got Jets. <laughs> Absolutely. And it, with the Pirates looking at the weapons they have, 
A lot of them are still sophomores, juniors, so even though tonight's senior night, when they graduate, looks like the Pirates are still in good shape. Going to go with the run play to Evans. And he barrels up the middle, picking up some good yardage, just shy of the 30-yard line. Yeah, Evans is a great workhorse, man. He's a great back. You can tell he has great vision and great understanding of how to run the ball here. He's trying to get uh, he's trying to get vertical as soon as possible. He doesn't really want to get outside, but he's trying to stretch uh, and make sure somebody jumps outside so he can get more gaps, uh, gap space. But great job by him and his vision. Six yards of carry is great. This time again, go to Evans. Nice footwork there, but the Brunswick defense shuts down the run. Jaden Evans, the junior. So again, we talk about how the Pirates have a young arson. So do the so do the uh, Rebels here, but the junior number 22. Jaden Evans. There he is again. Third time the charm. Here it is to midfield and tackled just inside the 45. I love watching great running backs run the ball. Look at his patience to set up his blocks and then he just sees the hole and takes off right away. Great vision. Great running back. We're watching some special athletes tonight. 24 yard pickup from the young man right there. Jaden Evans. And the Rebels at the 45 yard line, first and 10. We were told about this Rebels offense. It is explosive and with runs like that, all it takes is one of those big plays again and we could have ourselves a tie ball game. Quarterback gonna go to the air this time. Caught and tackled at the 20 yard line. Pass was completed to Ashley Thompson. Yeah, Thompson with a great route there. Um, Come back to the ball, making the play. Um, you see Hayes making great throws, step up in the pocket, and then he got vertical as soon as he got the ball there. Uh, that being Thompson. So great job on this offense. They want to run the ball downhill as much as possible, and then they want to take long shots. They, they spread you out. They want to hurt your heart. And give credit to the offensive line, allowing Hayes time to make that throw. Oh, what a hit. And go with the handoff. What a, yeah, what a big hit that was. Yeah, these linebackers are flowing to the ball very well. Very, very well. You see the, the handoff here, and Towns comes out of nowhere again with another big hit. That guy right there. Gordon's number 17, yeah, on the receiving end of that. Yeah, Towns, he's, you don't want to run, you know, up on him without, you know, without your protection being where it needs to be. So just shy of the 15 yard line. Great Evans, pursuit. or check that again. Gordon that was number 17, Gordon. Jordan Jimerson on the stop. Yeah, Jimerson did a great job of shedding his block and getting down the hill as soon as he could uh, to make that play. Great job. Tackles for loss are very important in a situation like this. Third, third and about six or so. Um, inside the red zone, that's a big play. Let's see what Coach John Ford calls here from the sidelines, and we have whistles, we get a timeout here. I think Coach wants to talk it over one time. That was by the Pirates. Coach Garrett Grady wants to chat with his team here. So we're gonna take a quick break. 7-0 is the score, but the Rebels knocking on the door, don't go away, here on CSN. operate as a team of teams, full-time, part-time, in or out of uniform, because greatness can come from anywhere. And when you have the right teams in place, it comes from everywhere. Join us. Jimmy John's is using legit ingredients. For a sandwich? <laughs> and sliced veggies. <laughs> Wait, what's so funny? The high quality ingredients. That's a problem! Jimmy John's, the sandwich of sandwiches. And welcome back, everyone. Come back from a timeout called by the Brunswick Pirates. So the Rebels with an opportunity here 
Third and seven, the pass up in the air, going to the corner of the end zone. No opportunity for the receiver to make the catch, Timothy Brown. Yeah, slight overthrow, Break. but yeah, slight throw overthrow, but there was a, a lot of pressure in his face. So you see the uh, the pressure here on the stunt there, and then the receiver had a little bit out of his reach to make a play there. But uh, great job by the defense there for the Pirates and making sure he got out of the end zone. So bring in a fourth and seven. Looks like they're going to go for the three points. That is Jonah Strickland, the senior with the opportunity here to bring his team within striking distance here. And it goes to the right, but stays within the uprights, but we have a flag on the field. The Effingham field goal is good. And it's gonna go against the Pirates. Yeah, I think it's running into the kicker here. The kicker on the if it's roughing, that's a first down. And that's what it sound like, roughing the kicker. And that'll just change the whole dynamics here. You can see the disappointment of Coach Grady's face. Watch it one more there. time. You watch one more time. Number 21 jumps way too late. Runs right into the kicker. You can't avoid that at all. I mean, that's a that's a rough play there, and unfortunately, you just can't get the team a first down. So it'll bring in first and ten. We'll see where they spot the ball here. Be first and goal there. First and goal inside the 10 here. So first and goal inside the 10 and gives the Rebels another opportunity here. So with 138, ball is spot at the eight yard line. And if you're the Rebels and coach John Ford, you're looking for that end zone with this opportunity here, second chance. This time, Quarterback with the toss the A's pass and incomplete. incomplete. Second goal, Rebels from the Guys, I don't know if you remember this, but uh, when the Seattle uh, Seahawks were playing the Super Bowl and they were like inside the like red zone, like about to score, and they had Marshawn Lynch as a running back, you probably just give it to Marshawn Lynch, right? But they didn't do that. They threw the ball. That was one of those situations where you got him in 22 in the backfield. He's rested. You don't give him the ball. I don't understand. Quarterback, quarterback keeper going to go to the left side and takes it in and for the eight-yard touchdown run. run. And so, great play design coach. there. Oh, great play design there with the uh, with the with the quarterback uh, design run there for the touchdown and great effort here. They pull the opposite way, which disrupts the flow, and then he just takes off and makes a play for the end zone. Great and we play. We know quarterback. We know quarterback Nate Hayes. Very versatile, not only with the arm, but showing off the run game as well. With the eight yard touchdown run, brings them in within one. And with the extra point attempt coming up here by quarterback Jonah Strickland. And it splits the uprights. We're tied at seven. And coach, this is what we were saying. This was gonna be an exciting close game. And that's what exactly we have. So don't go away, tied up at seven here on CSN. Athletes often push their bodies to the limit, completing the route, making a pass, and achieving that game-winning touchdown. That's why our team of certified athletic trainers are on the sidelines of every football game for Glenn County High Schools, Brantley County High School, McIntosh County Academy, and Frederica Academy. We provide preventative care, injury treatment, concussion management, and rehabilitation so athletes can stay off the bench and get in the game. ourselves a 7-7 tie ball game 128 remaining in the first quarter we got some so we're gonna go ahead and get ready for a kickoff here it was an eight yard quarterback keeper run by quarterback Hayes 
And we have a tie ball game between the Rebels and the Pirates as the winner tonight will be the number one team in the region. Nice run back by Ivan Johnson. And coach, I think uh, we're starting to see things settle down a little more here now. Not as quick and hasty as it was early on. Correct. I think that both teams are settling into who they want to be and they're doing their thing. I love that we're back to playing football. I mean, I like the, the high um, volume stuff, but when you play football, I love it. Now, let's take a look at your social media comments. Stand up, black flag, defense, let's go by Eric Alexander. And don't let up on boys, I'm watching from home. Let's go, big three, Devin Smith. And let's take a look at the play. We had a run from Elkins to Mitchell. Yeah, this is a great pass here from uh, Elkins to his number one target there, Terry Mitchell. Brings up second and one, and it looks like the Pirates picked that one up on the run play from Mr. William Heck. And with 57 seconds remaining in the first quarter, 7-7 seven, seven is our score. For the Rebels, that touchdown came in from a second opportunity after roughing the kicker when they were going to go for the three-point field goal. And another run play from the Pirates pushing his way up. Yeah, and we're seeing the run play just play off for the Pirates here. Yeah, it's good to see them get back to the run there. Um, one of the last comments on the social uh, comment said, uh, hashtag Devin Smith. I think Devin Smith got hurt last game. Uh, great linebacker number three. You've been seeing him making the plays all year long. We watched him make plays versus the academy um, and homecoming. He's been all over the field making great plays. So it's hard to see him go down, but uh, heard the surgery went really well for him. And we wish him all the very well, best in recovery. And it looks like Brunswick's just going to allow the clock to wind out here to end the first quarter. But tied at seven, Coach, we've, it was very entertaining this first quarter. Uh, it's been great, man. Up and down, both teams uh, trying to settle into who they are. And now we got a football game in our hands, 7-7. Seven seven. We're going to take a quick break with our score tied here at seven between the bricks here at Glen County Stadium. Don't go away here on CSN. Do you want to improve traffic? Do you want a new fire station? Do you want to help with stormwater management? Do you want better parks and recreation venues? How about a 44% return on your investment? Vote yes for Splost. We operate as a team of teams, full-time, part-time, in or out of uniform, because greatness can come from anywhere. And when you have the right teams in place, it comes from everywhere. Join us. And welcome back everyone to Glen County Stadium. Senior night kick things off and following that, we have ourselves a tie ball game, 7-7 as we are seeing the 5-0 Brunswick Pirates hosting the 5-0 FEM County Rebels. Coach Dre, so far, I mean, what would be some of the key words you would say about to describe this game we've seen so far just in the first quarter? Um, explosive. I mean, we've seen those explosive plays from both sides. I mean, great running uh, from uh, Effingham and great uh, big-time play from Terry Mitchell. I mean, this has been explosive so far, and uh, that's what you want to see in the, in the football game. And that's exciting. That's what the fans want to watch. So I hope you guys are being entertained by this as much as we are, man. It's been a great start to the game. Again, tonight, if the Pirates come out with the win, a 22-game win streak, regular game win streak, on the flip side for the Rebels. Let's take a look at some of your social media Comments, Coach Tedder got a great defense. That's my brother. Go Pirates. All right, Jen Tedder. And we know that uh, Coach Garrett Gray has mentioned Coach Tedder many times. Let's go black flag defense. Go Keyshawn, number eight. And class of 99, let's go, boys. We bleed that blue and gold. Great comments. Keep them coming in. We'll continue to read them on throughout the game. William Heck with the run play. 
the sophomore. See how many yards he might have picked up on that run. Yeah, it looks like um, they did a great job of plugging up the hole right away, and then he tried to get as much as he could, but didn't get anything there. So we got third and seven coming up here. Let's see if they can make a play here. So we had someone checking in on the comments from the class of 99 for Brunswick High School. Yeah, that was back in the Blue Death defense days. If you know so with 11-23, third and seven. The we coach draws up here for his team. Oh, call Tied there. up at seven. Yeah. yeah, William started going towards the line too early, so it's going to be a false start here. So that'll push them back even more. Make it third and even longer. Yeah, that's going to be the key today is the, the penalties, man. You got to you gotta stay ahead of schedule and uh, not have penalties against you. Both teams have had some, uh, some costly penalties early while they've been on the offensive side of the ball. So it's third and 12. Looks like from about the 45. And with 11.02 remaining. Elkins gonna hold on to it, but wow, the defense right there. And he had lost even more yards on that one. That's number 44 for the Rebels for the sack. Yeah, that's Kyle a great, Stone. Yeah, Kyle Stone, what a great well-timed blitz set up here by the Effingham guys. Uh, they came off the edge and sent two on one side and two on the other. Both of them, all of them got through, honestly. Uh, nothing really that Elkins could do. There you see it on the screen, fourth and 20. And not the type of drive Coach Garrett Grady was hoping for here. Yeah, you're, you're playing against a team. Were, yeah, you're playing against a team who's well coached and uh, they're gonna get after you. They're not, they're not trying to let you uh, have space and time and opportunity to make plays. They wanna put as much pressure on you as possible. And it looks like we got a little swap here. And good hang time, but quick to get the re returner for the Pirates special teams defense right there. Only they've got one or two yards after making the catch. Uh, that's incredible coverage there by the Pirates there. I don't think he got one yard at all. There. It's a great job there by the Pirates of uh, kicking it as far as they possibly could, keeping enough hang time to get the guy on the ground as soon as possible. So we got ourselves a game, guys. And there you see the epic inside. They are seven and two overall. They started off the first two weeks slow, both the uh, losses to Richmond Hill and Burke County. But after that, seven straight weeks with victories. And they are five and zero oh in region play. And tonight will be crowned the top dog in the region here. Right now, it's anyone's game with us having a tie score, seven to seven. Glad you could join us here on CSN with the run play. Evans to the 20, gets past it. And tonight, that's been the teamwork of Evans and Hayes. Yeah, but you know who the playmaker is making that play on that tackle again, number seven, Lionel Twitty. Twitty, he's having a great game. Um, you knew he would. I mean, he's gonna, he's gonna make sure he is a vocal leader for the team and he's gonna get after it tonight. Great job there by uh, keeping containment and making sure that the running back had nowhere to go. Pickup of three yards on the play for Evans. Brings up second and seven. Go again with Evans up the middle. And the Pirates defensive line right there to push him back. That is correct, number eight. Uh, Kayshawn Thomas again, he came out of the game with an injury. Now he's back in there making sure that these guys have no room to run between the tackles there. Great job by Kayshawn, closing that gap as soon as possible making the play. So third down and four to go. Jaden Evans, the workhorse for the Rebels here on the offensive running game. You really have to give it to that young man. I mean, he's just really powering forward and working hard to pick up all those yards that he's gained so far. But to go up against a strong defense like the Pirates. Oh, no. Nowhere to go. Yeah, unfortunately. And we have ourselves 
15 yards. The sack, but you see a flag in there too? Yeah, it's going to be a face mask there by uh, Kayshawn. Great pursuit, but unfortunately he grabbed the face mask to make the tackle. We see the Let's replay take a look, here. Coach. Yeah, we see the replay here. He's, he gives a great job of splitting two different guys, getting around one, and then he grabbed the face mask. Really bad penalty there. You hate to see that. Great job by our camera operator there. Pick that up big time. And once again, another opportunity here for the Rebels. That's how they scored that eight-yard touchdown run. It was in roughing the kicker. And so what would have been a third down and long brings up a new set of downs and an opportunity to continue to drive forward here. Yeah, both teams got to keep their composure in those situations. But great job of pursuit. We're doing a great job on both sides of the ball. Give the ball to Evans. He goes to the left side, but tackled quickly. Looks like a shoestring tackle. Got a hold of the legs there. Yeah, Ivan Johnson. The Pirates. Yeah, Ivan Johnson. He's he's a he's a leader right here. He's a he's a guy who'll come in and give you spells at running back. Great safety, great pursuit. Uh, there coming down in the box and making a great tackle there. Great job. Ball spotted at the 37-yard line. Second and eight. So the Rebels with a second chance on this drive here. Has to hurry, Hayes oh. with the pass. Incomplete. Got a flag on the play, looks like a false start there. The defense of the Pirates putting pressure there on Hayes. He had to rush the pass. Yeah, we had a but false. With the flag. Yeah, we had a false start there. It looks like what's happening is uh, these receivers have a lot of space as they, uh, and then the, the, as soon as the um, defensive backs walk up to the line, they, they've been flinching a little bit and going outside. It's like the third one I've seen in this game. But great job by the Pirates of changing up their coverages, whether they're going back and giving them space or coming up and pre pre doing press coverage. So that'll move the ball back to the 32-yard line, second and 13. You saw head coach John Ford there on your screen, his second year, and a big game tonight. For both teams. Quarterback Hayes again not able to get out of there as he is sandwiched between a couple of pirates there. Yeah, great job by both of these defensive linemen. I mean, that's a lot of guys coming at you right there. Look at this. Oh, my goodness. What are you going to do? Both of those guys are, I can't even see the, the quarterback when these guys are making a run like that. Great job on the defensive line. Both guys. That was Kayshawn Thomas and number 90 99. for the Pirates as well. 99, River Creel. And uh, poor Hayes, he was in between that sandwich there. Third and 19. Hayes with a quick little screen pass. And not a, very many yards picked up on there. I don't even think they got close to even the original line of scrimmage. So the defense really putting on pressure. Yeah, great defensive stand there by the Pirates, man. Great plays all over the field, whether it's the secondary or the defensive linemen or the linebackers. Great job at all three levels. Uh, you love to see that if you're a Pirate. So 7-7 seven, seven the score, 6.48 remaining. And in back to kick, number 42, Jonah Strickland. And there you see to return the ball, number two, Ivan Johnson. This time they go with a kick. Looked like it went over the almost over the head. That was uh, Keon Wallace. But was it enough for the Rebels to recover? Let's see. Looks like the officials signaling that they are. They did. Interesting play and interesting results here. So this is a very unfortunate play by River here. He sees the ball and he tries to pick it up and make a play. And fortunately, he touched it, and uh, after that, anybody can grab the ball and get it. So it'll be first down for the uh, Effingham guys. Once again, give credit to our camera operator getting into that. And we're able to see where he touched that spinning ball, and it got away from him. And another opportunity given to the Rebels. Yeah, normally when there's a bad punt, everybody just yells and tells everybody to get away from the ball. Unfortunately, he tried to make a play. So it costs his team. Let's see if he can make up for it. First and 10 from the 36. Third time the charm here. Let's see Evans 
up the middle, but that defensive line right there to stop him. And once again, calling out the name on defense, Kayshawn Thomas. Well, Kayshawn Thomas is, is uh, he's a man among boys. I mean, he's a Wake Forest commit, uh, great athlete, uh, great football IQ as well. Um, with him and Twitty on that left side, it's going to be really difficult to run that way. Pick up a one, second and nine, ball on the 32. Hayes back, has time, throws it to the middle side and just out of the reach of the intended receiver, Keon William Wallace. Yeah, the quarterback had plenty of time to throw the ball. Um, tried to throw it out there and give his, chance, his receiver a chance to run to the ball, but did not uh, quite get the accuracy that he really wanted there. A little bit of an overthrow. So the third opportunity here for the Rebels. Third and nine. Let's see what Coach John Ford and his staff draw up here. They're going to go the air again. This time to the left side, sideline, and incomplete the pass. And we got a flag. Yeah. Late flag thrown in. Yep, pass interference here. Um, rough game here for, for this young man. I mean, he didn't want to give up a touchdown. He had no idea where the ball was. And instead of uh, being smart and finding the ball, he panicked and just grabbed the receiver here. You see the slow motion replay here. He's not even looking for the ball. He's just grabbing the receiver because he doesn't want to give up a touchdown to hurt his team. So, unfortunate play there. And you could tell when the flag came out, he was just, and you can still see the body language. That's uh, Tavon Gatz at number 21, the junior. And so, we'll see where they spot it now. Looks like about midfield, a little past midfield, at the 48 yard line. So, another set of first downs. First down, so now let's see the, the fourth opportunity here for the Rebels. Evans up the middle, past the 45. And it seems like the Pirates tonight are really giving the Rebels opportunities here tonight. Yeah, the, the extra chances are really going to hurt you in the long run. you got to eliminate the mistakes and, uh, and take care of the ball here. But... Um, Great job by the defensive, still answering. They're not giving up big plays every single time. They're still locked in. They've been on the field for a very long time. So good job staying locked in. And that was River Creel in the replay. He was putting on the hit. And again, stopping the run. Yeah, this defense is very special. Uh, the black flag defense out here for the Pirates, they're going to get after you. I mean, and I, I got to say, man, there's something about black jerseys that I just love. I feel like if you're playing defense and you're wearing black jerseys, you're going to have a good day. That's just kind of how it as always goes, no matter how good the defense is. But these guys are getting after it. Great job by uh, Kayshawn again, getting off the ball and making a play. Third and long. So another third down situation for the Rebels. Ball's just shy of the 45. And with third and seven, 4.08 remaining here in the first half. Evans, the ball carrier, goes to the left side. Wow. The defense not allowing him to move and forward. Ivan Johnson. Yeah, Ivan Johnson again making a play. Um, look at the uh, speed on this, this, uh, this angle here. He sees the alley, and look at this. Closing speed. The running back thought he had any, run, any room, and he didn't, because Ivan Johnson, again, making a great play for his team. So not only is Johnson making the plays on defense, I think he's also going to go in the backfield to return this uh, punt here as well. That is correct. Um, you're not going to win either way. You can't kick it to either one of these guys. Both of these guys are playmakers. Well, the punt is off. Great punt. And inside the end zone, so they'll start off at the 20-yard line, tied up 7-7. For the Rebels, few opportunities to have a chance to put in some big plays and score, but give it to the Pirates for stopping that from happening. Blue Death Vibes finish what the class of 99 started, Sidney Ross. And let's go Pirates, class of 81, Wanda Jackson. Guys, I, I got to say, I love watching these defense Let's, play. I mean. Let's take a look at some old shots here, Dre. I think we got some, some images here. Oh, my goodness. Ah. 
Yo, what is <laughs> What this? is this, class of uh, 90s? Yeah. Yeah. Andre Ow. Clinch grins as he thinks about that delicious lunch he just had. Mmm. <laughs> wow. There we go. Guys, this is um interesting. Oh, yeah. So, yeah, this is me in high school. I don't remember any of these pictures or what I'm wearing. <laughs> this is rough. But, uh... Uh, what years was this around? This is 2000, 2001, 2002. Uh, good job, guys. Great find. I appreciate that. <laughs> My dad's laughing at me, too. Thanks, guys. Appreciate that. And I'll tell you what, if they, <laughs> if they, if they took a, uh, a shot of you right now in the press box, you don't look any different than you do in those pictures. Oh, yeah. I've, I haven't aged. I've just, I've, I've just matured a little bit. All right, guys. Let's get back to some football. Uh, <laughs> seven... Seven seven is our score. There he is. Look at that. Haven't aged a bit. All right, here we go. Outside run here. Uh, nice pickup run there by the Pirates, number four. Looks like we got a hold there. And Towns looks like the run is going to come back as there was a penalty against the Pirates. And you can see, not happy, Coach yeah. Garrett Grady. You can't, you, you can't keep hurting yourself, you know. I mean, it makes the game a lot tougher when you got to keep going backwards and hurting yourself. And definitely, Coach, from the weeks that we've covered the Pirates, I think tonight we've seen more of the, the mistakes and the penalties called. A lot of the other games were very flawless. Yeah, that's the pressure of a championship game. That's what it does to you, but still a lot of game left. Elkins with the pass, go wide open, Drayton, and he gets past the 30 and pushed out of bounds. Oh, another catch by Terry Mitchell actually getting the first down. Check that, yes. Yeah, Terry's been having and a good game. Uh, he, he's a very explosive receiver, and every time he gets the ball, he has a chance to break one. So, got to be, gotta be mindful where he's at at all times. A good stop there. They don't call him touchdown Terry. Here we go. Nothing. Wide open. Check this out. I don't think you're catching the tails. 30 to the 20. 10 maybe touchdown. gets in. He does. Touchdown. Number four, Jamarius Towns, the sophomore. Great run. Great explosive run. Great job sticking to the, uh, the, the, the bread and butter there. And what a great run by Thomas. Or Towns. Great play. Let's nice watch the replay. Run by Towns. Let's watch the replay. You yeah, got go two ahead, guys. Go. You got two guys pulling around, and then after that, he finds a seam, and just that's it. I mean, great job running, great job keeping composure, and scoring a touchdown there for the Pirates. Big time touchdown at a big time moment. So it's a 13 to seven ball game right now. Let's see uh, if they can add the extra point, make it a 14 seven here. Kick is up and blocked. And no good, so it's going to be a 13-7 lead here. The PAT being blocked by the Rebels. We're going to take a quick break. Big, great action going on. Don't go away here on CSN. Athletes often push their bodies to the limit, completing the route, making a pass, and achieving that game-winning touchdown. That's why our team of certified athletic trainers are on the sidelines of every football game for Glen County High Schools, Brantley County High School, McIntosh County Academy, and Frederica Academy. We provide preventative care, injury treatment, concussion management, and rehabilitation so athletes can stay off the bench and get in the game. Coach Garrett Grady not happy. What's going on uh, with the call here? 13-7 is the score. 3-10 remaining. 
Yeah, it was a very, yeah. Unfor- yeah, very unfortunate situation there. I understand why coach is upset. It, it, you know, he's getting uh, the the kids getting pushed down on the ground. He pushes the guy off of him, and they call a penalty there for the, for for that um, for that action. They always catch the second guy. You know, I've heard that for many years, and that was one of those situations where that's true. So going with the kickoff here, 13-7 the score. Ball goes out of bounds. We'll see where they place the football to start off the drive. But a big touchdown run by Towns gives Brunswick the 13-7 lead. Yeah, we got, I mean, decent field position for Effingham uh, Rebels here. Uh, we'll see what the Pirates do on defense, see if they keep the same intensity and the same discipline they had before. Uh, hopefully they don't give up any crazy penalties this time, but it's going to be a rough halftime speech for both coaches here with all these penalties being thrown. Absolutely, absolutely, to try to clean up the second half and mi- minimize the mistakes. And so the ball is spotted at the 45-yard line. Quarterback oh, with the pass. My oh, my goodness. What a big hit. Oh, big come on, jump on the ball, Towns. What a play, though. What a play, what a play. Big time hit and a big time moment there. And I think that's what Coach might be telling him there. Oh, yeah, he's telling him to, to, to you know, jump on the ball there. The ball is precious and all that good stuff. But look at this hit right here going on somebody's highlight tape right away. Again, Ivan Johnson just disrupting the game there. Would have been a scoop and score. Probably should have just jumped on the ball there. But great job by Ivan Johnson, the safety, the senior, the leader making a great job, making a great play there on senior night. And the spin on that ball was just too much, so pushes it back to the 32-yard line. Pass from Hayes, overthrown, bring a third down and long. Yeah, a little miscommunication from the receiver uh, and the quarterback there, but yeah, the uh, blue flag, I mean, the black flag defense is definitely imposing their will on this team. Uh, you, you love to see it. You love to see them settle in. If they can keep playing defense like this, they can actually do a lot of great things in the, in the postseason as well. So it brings third and 24. 244 remaining here in the first half. Evans running the ball, just hits a wall and gets stopped. Nowhere going there anywhere. What a great job! What a, I mean, this is the this is how you want to see your football team answer uh, or, and respond to something like that. You know, the, they get a bad penalty against them. They start off with uh, giving away good field position, field field position, with a lot of time left, and they just get a three and out right away. Big hit, big time plays, and now they got to punt the ball back to the Pirates, and the Pirates have the time to run that two minute drill and maybe get another score. And when we come back from halftime. Brunswick will have the ball. They won the coin toss, elected to defer. And they had a nice close-up shot there of Nate Hayes, the quarterback. And it looks like we have a whistle timeout here. And the Rebels taking a timeout to think things through here on the situation, fourth down and long. And so with this timeout, we're gonna take a quick break with Brunswick in the lead, 13 to seven, don't go away. operate as a team of teams, full-time, part-time, in or out of uniform, because greatness can come from anywhere. And when you have the right teams in place, it comes from everywhere. Join us. Jimmy John's is using legit ingredients. For a sandwich? (laughs) And sliced veggies. Wait, what's so funny? (laughs) High quality ingredients. That's a problem! Jimmy John's, the sandwich of sandwiches. And welcome back, everyone, to the Continental Sports Network. 13 to 8 is the score with the punt coming here from the Rebels and in the backfield to receive the Uh-oh. Pirates here. Uh-oh. With a big catch and a big run here. Put some on leg, leg movement Uh-oh. into the third. I think he's going to take it. Run to the 20, here we go. To the Touchdown. 10. Touchdown, Terry, ladies and gentlemen. I got to say, man. <laughs> 
every time I see this guy make a catch the ball, I, I'm on the edge of my seat. I'm not even gonna lie to you. Because every time he touches the ball, you know the hashtag is coming next. Touchdown, Terry. Another great play. Great return. And another key moment. Let's look at it again, guys. Once he broke this, 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 this first guy down right here, you already knew. It's just a race to the end zone after that. Listen to the crowd. A, a 73 yard return for Mr. Hashtag Touchdown Terry. That brings it to a 19 7 ball game. And the kick splits the uprights, and we have ourselves a 20 to 7 game with Brunswick after the big run. Let's take a look at some of your social media comments here after the big run by Touchdown Terry. And we have ourselves a conference going on here on the field, Coach. Yeah, we got another flag here. Of the referees are really trying to get the game under control. They've called a couple of unsportsmanlike conduct so far, so I'm not really sure what they're calling right now, but it looks like something in that vein. So our official, the referee, gonna tell us we got unsportsmanlike conduct. And he's gonna go talk to Coach Garrett Grady again. I know Coach Grady was having a conversation when we came back from the break. But now I wanted to find out why his team is getting hit with the unsportsmanlike flag there. I don't think this is I don't is know, Coach, did you see anything there? Yeah. Yeah, I don't, I don't think it's going against Brunswick High this time. I think that let's, – let's watch and see what happens real quick. Let's see what the, what the referee says. They're having a conversation, but it looks like what happened is the guy has been pushing down um, on the, uh, the long snapper um, over and over and over again, right? And Grady saw that and – wanted to try to see. Oh, somebody we, ejected? Yeah, he wanted to see if that can stop. Ah. That's why he was telling him earlier that uh, you got to watch that. That's what he's doing. So the referees watched for it this time. He actually got him to watch it, and they ejected him out of the game. So that was Grady doing a great job of uh, lobbying for his men, lobbying for his guys, and getting the result that he should get because, you know, we don't want unsportsmanlike kind of guy here for these kids. We want people playing the game the right way. Um, you want the game to happen between the lines um, without any uh, foolishness, if you will. So... That's what happened. And Coach Grady, even going off the sidelines there, taking the headsets off. Yeah, what you're seeing right and here, guys, is what you're seeing right here, yeah. guys, is a coach who's is telling his team to play with composure and to play with uh, the right uh, amount of uh, uh, discipline. Like you know, and it's unfortunate that uh, this keeps happening, um, uh, and we just lost a guy. Um, from the Pirates there because of that. And he's going to make sure that everybody still plays um, the right way and the Pirate way. You know, we don't want to play um, outside of ourselves. So um, I think I said it wrong. I said it was against the wrong team, but it, is, it was against the Pirates. We did lose a player there. So with 136 remaining, unfortunately, as you mentioned, player has been taken out of the game. Referee with the unsportsmanlike conduct call and the ejection. 20 to 7 is the score. And let's see here, returning the ball, number four, Timothy Brown, the senior, gets just shy of the 40-yard line, and they'll start off first and 10, but we see a flag on the field. So we'll see what the Rebels and Coach John Ford do here. And it goes against the Rebels. It's a legal chop block there um, on the return. They're going to lose some yards there. But. This first half has been very interesting. A lot of penalties. Uh, we'll see it right here. Uh, you see the guy here getting chopped there. You can't really block low like that in the open field. That's illegal. Um, and that's going to get a penalty every time. We know this is a big game with big implications, so everyone wearing their emotions on their sleeves here tonight. So with 129 remaining, 20 to 7 is the score. Brunswick recent with a 73-yard punt return by Terry Mitchell. Hashtag touchdown Terry. He makes us here 20 to 7. Things got started off by the Pirates. 56-yard touchdown by Elkins to, of course, Mr. Touchdown Terry. And that's how they got on the board first. So we'll go with the run play. Picked up a few yards. And with 117 remaining here in the first half, 
Let's see if the Rebels can utilize clock management to get themselves on the board here. As we mentioned, Pirates will have the ball back in the second half as they deferred the coin toss. They won the coin toss and deferred the ball. There's quarterback Nate Hayes, the dual threat from the ground and the air. This time, hand the ball off to number 17. Gordon, the ball Damian Gordon, the sophomore, takes it to the outside. Yeah, Gordon. And I think we see another flag. flag. Yeah, it looks like we had a, um, a um, horse collar tackle. Looks like uh, on that play. I mean, I mean, if we kept track of the penalties here, we it would be at a, it, I mean, at a very high uh, rate. I mean, I don't have a Bottom flag counter, but it's not looking good. Oh, actually, it was a block in the back. It's great for the Pirates there. Unfortunate for the Rebels, and that's going to probably be all they can probably do. Um, unless they go deep here at the end of half. Ten yard mark off, takes the ball back to the 12 yard line. So the penalty moves him back to the 12 yard line with 47 seconds remaining. Correction, 17 yard line. And so Brunswick will go into halftime with the lead unless the Rebels pull off a big scoring play here with the remaining time, 30 seconds, clock winding down. Going to go with Evans, who doesn't pick up very much, maybe a couple of yards, get to the back of the 20-yard line. Yeah, uh, they're, I think they're just conceding that they're not going to be able to uh, make a play here. And I think it's probably cost They want to turn the ball over in this situation and give the Pirates another score before they end their half. So uh, they'll probably let the clock run out here and uh, go to the second half being ready to try again. Um, but great job for, for both teams coming out, but too many penalties, a little bit unsportsmanlike conduct from both guys. And, it looks like they both going to have to settle down. Um, these these half-house speeches are going to be very important, and these guys getting uh, uh, their, their, their feet back under them is going to be really important as well. But great job by the Pirates. A lot of explosive plays. Touchdown, Terry, with two touchdowns in the first half. Got to love that. He definitely said it, Coach. Be a fly on the wall in those locker rooms going into halftime to hear what both coaches have to say. And so the score... 20 to seven as we go into halftime. We've seen a action-packed first half as tonight's game decides who's going to be the region champion. And we've seen some great plays from the ground, in the air, defense, offense, and even touchdown. Terry making two appearances. And who knows what's in store for us in the second half. But as you mentioned, hopefully, in the second half, things might get cleaned up a little bit. So don't go away. We'll have second half action coming right up. us can see the future but we reach towards it anyway we might doubt whether we're good enough or brave enough or question whether we belong but there's a place between now and the future where you realize you've always belonged it's up here join, join us. us rise above Athletes often push their bodies to the limit, completing the route, making a pass, and achieving that game-winning touchdown. That's why our team of certified athletic trainers are on the sidelines of every football game for Glen County High Schools, Brantley County High School, McIntosh County Academy, and Frederica Academy. We provide preventative care, injury treatment, concussion management, and rehabilitation so athletes can stay off the bench and get in the game. Do you want to improve traffic? Do you want a new fire station? Do you want to help with stormwater management? Do you want better parks and recreation venues? How about a 44% return on your investment? Vote yes for SPLOST. 
Boss, Jimmy John's is a problem. Where does they using legit ingredients? High quality stuff. For a sandwich? <laughs> <laughs> Premium meats. That's <laughs> <laughs> baked bread. That's my veggies. That's how we get it. Wait, what's so funny? <laughs> High quality ingredients. That's a problem! That's not good. Jimmy John, the sandwich of sandwiches. Presented by the United States Air Force, and we'll be back with second half action right after.
Ladies and gentlemen, now entering the field for your halftime entertainment, the Glen County Board of Education is very proud to present the 2022 edition of the Brunswick High School Morgan Pirates. The Pirates run to the field direction of row majors Alex Stefan and Tucker Corbett. Percussion captains are Kwame Pierre, Peyton Miller, and Mary Kennedy. Color guard captains are Ama Kadua and Henley Fields. Tonight, the Brunswick Isles will be performing a part of their show entitled Going Gaga. Selections to include Poker Face, Bad Romance, Gallo, and Judas. Ladies and gentlemen, the Brunswick High School Marching Pirates!
Thanks for watching the United States Air Force, Air Force Halftime Show. We'll be back with kickoff right after this. us can see the future but we reach towards it anyway we might doubt whether we're good enough or brave enough or question whether we belong but there's a place between now and the future where you realize you've always belonged it's up here join, join us. us rise above Athletes often push their bodies to the limit, completing the route, making a pass, and achieving that game-winning touchdown. That's why our team of certified athletic trainers are on the sidelines of every football game for Glen County High Schools, Brantley County High School, McIntosh County Academy, and Frederica Academy. We provide preventative care, injury treatment, concussion management, and rehabilitation so athletes can stay off the bench and get in the game. Do you want to improve traffic? Do you want a new fire station? Do you want to help with stormwater management? Do you want better parks and recreation venues? How about a 44% return on your investment? Vote yes for SPLOST. Boss, Jimmy John's is a problem. Where does they using legit ingredients? High quality stuff. For a sandwich? <laughs> Premium meats. Let's make friends. Man, choice veggies. Watch how we do it. Wait, what's up, funny? <laughs> High quality ingredients. That's a problem. That's not good. Jimmy John, the sandwich of sandwich. can see the future but we reach towards it anyway we might doubt whether we're good enough or brave enough or question whether we belong but there's a place between now and the future where you realize you've always belonged it's up here join, join us. us rise above Athletes often push their bodies to the limit, completing the route, making a pass, and achieving that game-winning touchdown. 
That's why our team of certified athletic trainers are on the sidelines of every football game for Glenn County High Schools, Brantley County High School, McIntosh County Academy, and Frederica Academy. We provide preventative care, injury treatment, concussion management, and rehabilitation so athletes can stay off the bench and get in the game. Do you want to improve traffic? Do you want a new fire station? Do you want to help with stormwater management? Do you want better parks and recreation venues? How about a 44% return on your investment? Vote yes for Splost. Boss, Jimmy John's is a problem. Where does they're using legit ingredients? High quality stuff. For a sandwich? <laughs> <laughs> Premium meats. <laughs> <laughs> Let's make friends. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, what's up funny? Uh, high quality ingredients. That's a problem! That's not good. Jimmy John, the sandwich of sandwich. Welcome back to Glen County Stadium. We're going to take a look at some of the first half highlights right now. All right, so first we have the uh, start of the game. First throw from Elkins is going to be picked off here by the Rebels there. Start of the game there. A lot of high action in the first half. And this first sack here ch changes the momentum there in the game. And then uh, after that, you saw this big play here by T.D. Mitchell. T.J. Mitchell, touchdown Terry. Doing great things, great footwork, making people miss and doing what he does. Great way to start the, the, the half for him. And then uh, next we have um, uh, Jaden Evans with a long run here. Great run, getting him a great field position to get the, the change of momentum back in the, their hands. And then a great run here by the quarterback for a touchdown here. Mr. Nate Hayes putting the, the, his team on the board. Next we got a big sack there on third down. And then we have this amazing run here by Towns. And then, of course, the punt return here by uh, Mr. Terry Mitchell. A lot of electric plays here in the first half. Great way to start it off for the Pirates. And now we got back to live action. A lot of first half action indeed, coach. And we were talking to be a fly on the wall in the locker rooms to see what both coaches would tell their teams. Inspirational quotes and also to clean things up as well on the penalty side. And just as we say that, I think we have our first penalty marker here in the third quarter. Yeah, a lot of penalties have been going on in this game, and uh, unfortunately, the Pirates have started off with a hold and call to start. But they have great field position still. Uh, you want to get to the 25-yard line to start the drive, so that's where you want to be to start it. Um, you got one more half left to play before playoff football. You want to do it the right way, so let's see how both teams finish this second half. So with the 20-7 to, to lead for Brunswick, Elkins, the quick pass to Mr. Williams. Yeah. He goes out of bounds right away. Touchdown, Terry. Getting the first reception of the first half here, or second half, rather. Yeah, that's Get just, things started here on yeah. senior night. Yeah, that's just as good as a run. You get the ball in the playmaker's hands, he gets a quick five yards there. Great job. Ball at the 31 yard line, second and four. This time go with the run game. That's Ivan Johnson. We've seen him on defense, now also on offense. See if he picked up a few more yards here. Yeah, he shows third and four. Officials timeout. Now we got a timeout by the officials here, and I know Coach Dre mentioned a lot of the time the officials talking with each other as far as, you know, Looks like getting some more rules and some engagement here with Coach Garrett Grady. And you said Coach Grady doing a good job keeping the officials on their toes. Yeah, he's trying to keep the officials honest and he's trying to protect his team, which I love. I mean, 
he's doing a great job communicating. It's very frustrating when you're in the middle of a game and things are just going uh, awry and you got to keep your composure because as a coach, the team looks at you, right? So he's trying to make sure the guys are doing the right thing, uh, leading with integrity um, and keeping all of his pillars uh, that he has for his football team at the forefront of this team's mind. So it uh, looks like we got an equipment issue here that he's trying to figure out with the uh, officials here. And um, uh, Once we get all this settled, we can play football again. But it's, it's, it's not – it's not easy to manage the entire game, your team, the officials, um, and uh, and keep your own composure as well. But uh, Coach Grady's doing a great job of keeping everybody accountable, whether it be his teammates, I mean, his, uh, his coaching staff, his players, or the referees in this case. And now we got a flag. Yeah, but Unsportsmanlike conduct again on the Pirates. You think it might be on Coach? Yes, yeah, definitely on coach here. Um, it's, it's, it's probably an a, 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 a equipment issue or something like that. But um. and they have coach has been really working the sidelines, having the officials, like you said, really stay on task and on target. And you can see Coach Garrett Grady not in agreement, shaking his head. But as you said, it, it definitely will keep the officials thinking with knowing that coaches on the sideline that's making sure scrutinizing what's going on yeah it looks like the player that got ejected uh, was back in the game so they threw a penalty on coach but uh, you know these things are, are are frustrating for for uh for the coaches and, and for the and for the referees but ultimately like you keeping your composure keeps your team uh, ahead of schedule so we'll see how uh grady and the rest of the coaching staff handles the rest of the game here going forward hopefully the referees don't take this personally and it, it becomes a who's right, who's wrong type thing. Ultimately, it's about keeping the game uh, the, the main thing, the main attraction, and not put yourself in the middle of it. So. I moved it to third and 20, ball back on the 15-yard line. Elkins has to hurry with the pass. Pass is completed to Terry Mitchell, and he gets past the 25-yard line. He gets up a little hobbly there, but it looks like he's okay. Yeah, that's, that's just getting as many yards as you can in that situation there on third down there. But uh, rough start to the to the half. Uh, penalties have been the, the Achilles heel of, for the Pirates all game, but the game is two to 27. we got a long way to definitely go. Did oh, take, definitely did take the wind out of the sails for the Pirates opening drive here in the second half. But if you're head coach John Ford of the Rebels, that's where you take the opportunity and tell your team, let's go ahead and capitalize on the disruption of the Pirates play here that just occurred here in the beginning of the third quarter. And it looks like the kicker is calling for a timeout here. And so obviously something with the game clock getting close to expiring, so they call the timeout. So things kind of not going well for the Pirates to start things up. We'll, re we'll be back here, 27 is the score. Do you want to improve traffic? Do you want a new fire station? Do you want to help with stormwater management? Do you want better parks and recreation venues? How about a 44% return on your investment? Vote yes for Splost. We operate as a team of teams, full-time, part-time, in or out of uniform, because greatness can come from anywhere. And when you have the right teams in place, it comes from everywhere. Join us. Do you want to? And welcome back everyone. 20 to seven to score. Coach Dre, we get ourselves a punt here, loose ball. That's and he scooped and moved it forward. That's an incomplete pass. And this ball's gonna roll to the 40 yard line. Wow, this opening half just continues to be surprising. Yeah, unfortunately, things have not been good for the Pirates here. Um, rough play there. Uh, the, the punter there had a low snap, had to pick it up off the ground. As he picked it up off the ground, he stumbled and threw the ball forward. Uh, probably going to call like an intentional grounding or something like that in the situation as well. So, oh yeah, element and eligible man outfield instead, instead. I'm sorry, but uh, yeah, uh, tough, tough break for the Pirates to start the half. I mean, it's gonna take somebody 
uh, on the sideline, whether it be coaches or players, to get everybody back on track because the game is not over just because you're winning the game. So uh, great, you know, great field position, obviously, for Effingham Rebels, and they have a chance to go out here and uh, make it a game right away. Absolutely, absolutely. So the kicker, McLean Finneran, as she said, uh, doing his best he could under that pressure. So it'll be first and 10. Ball spotted at the 27-yard line. And the quarterback with the short pass. But there's a defense right there to stop it. And it just shows you, Coach, night and day when the offense is struggling, how the defense just firing on all cylinders can come in and, and just salvage the, you know, parts of the game here. Yeah, football is a game where you got to be uh, special in all uh, three phases of the game. I mean, you got to be good on defense. You got to be good on offense. You got to be good on special teams. And when one of the three is lacking, or two or three is lacking, as long as you have a good defense, you know that's how you uh, stay in game. So that's why the defense is always special, um, and that's why defense wins championships. They got pushed back to the 30-yard line. Evans again, powering up the middle, fights forward, and gets to about the 35. Ball popped loose, though. Let's see. Yeah, they, the whistle yeah, were the blown. Whistle, exactly, they whistled him down, Anthony. So it's going to be third down here, uh, but good job by the defense of, of holding their own and uh, making sure that yeah, this uh, doesn't play. get out of hand too fast. So bring up third down from the 25. So bring up third down from the 25-yard line. With 8.22 remaining here in the third quarter. Glad you could join us. Interesting start to the third quarter here. Quarterback has to shuffle around. Got hit hard. Pass is incomplete. Let's see if the young man's okay after that big hit. Wow. Um, you know, that's tough, man. I, you know, I hate to see that. They're going to call rough in the pass in the situation. Uh, the fans here are not going to like it, but uh, you got to protect the players. I mean, this is a really, really rough shot here. He's getting tackled below and then gets hit up top. Very good clean hit if you're looking at you know football we play back in the day but nowadays if you if you um lead with that thrust right there against a quarterback who's who's defense is why he's in the air they're gonna call that it's unfortunate that they've been calling it in every level but um they're gonna protect the quarterbacks so with 806 remaining a big hit on quarterback nate hayes who i mean after that big hit like that you're just glad to see him moving around like that and like nothing happened. So quarterback loses the snap on the handoff. Let's see what happens on the fumble. Brunswick looking like they might have recovered. And turnover. And the official signals. Once again, so the, the defense. Pirates. Oh, yeah. Go ahead, Tanya. Yep. Once again, you're right. The defense of the Pirates comes through again yet for Brunswick. What a play. I mean, unfortunately, uh, the, the quarterback had a, a, missed, uh, a, a misstep with the handoff there, and they turned the ball over. But we can see the handoff here. It's just a mesh point thing, right? The quarterback wanted to keep it. The running back wanted to keep it. Uh, miscommunication ends up turning into a turnover there for the Pirates. Big-time turnover at a big-time moment, getting their team back in the game. Now they can just settle down and get back to football. Another great job by our fine production crew to pick that up. And we have another loose ball. And going into the end zone for the touchdown, amazing, number two, Messiah Bacon. Man, this is a very emotional swing happening right now. Um, the game the game has been going one way. The momentum has shifted to the other side. And as soon as we get the ball back, the Pirates, they run the ball on the outside and quickly turn the ball over. We see the run right here by Towns. He tries to get outside again like he has before. Actually, this is heck. And um, they held him up, and then looks like the ball popped right out, right into another guy's hands, and he just runs it right into the end zone for a touchdown for the Rebels. We have ourselves a game, ladies and gentlemen, 20 to 13 before the kick. Wow, 20 to 13 with the extra point attempt coming up. What a wild start to this second half. Kick is up, splits the uprights, it is good. It is a 20 to 14 ball game on that loose ball. Turnover for the Rebels to capitalize on that. Big for a second half so far. No boy, we'll be back here on CSN. Do you want to improve traffic? Do you want a new fire station? 
Do you want to help with stormwater management? Do you want better parks and recreation venues? How about a 44% return on your investment? Vote yes for SPLOST. We operate as a team of teams, full-time, part-time, in or out of uniform, because greatness can come from anywhere. And when you have the right teams in place, it comes from everywhere. Join us. And welcome back, everyone. 20 to 14 to score after a touchdown on the turnover by the Pirates. Messiah Bacon for the touchdown run. Let's take a look at Evans, and there was this first fumble that occurred, and that gave the Pirates the ball and possession. I think, Coach, like you said, is it a full moon tonight? Because look what happens right afterwards. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that one person coughs it up, another person coughs it up. I mean, it's, it's, um, it's been a, a crazy series of events for the last couple of plays, you know. That's what you got you to gotta expect that when you're, playing, when you're watching a high school football game sometimes, but... Man, that's what makes it entertaining because you never know what's going to happen. Let's see what happens the rest of this half. 20 to 14 is a score. Plenty of football remaining. And the Pirates returning it to the 30-yard line up to the 40. And that was Jamarius Towns, the sophomore. But what an amazing start to this second half. We saw turnovers and... My goodness, and the coach getting an opportunity to pretty much advocate for his team and then the unsportsmanlike call. It's just been a lot here. We've, you know, only in the third quarter here. Yeah, I feel like we've all aged a little bit watching that first half, and um, <laughs> now we're back to playing some football here. Let's see how these guys respond after all the chaos. And we have a penalty. Ball, yeah, penalty flag. And to key in on something you said, for the games that we've covered for the Pirates, not much adversity for them to to experience, but I think tonight really puts them to the test. And, of course, being a big game that it is, I guess they wouldn't expect otherwise. Yeah, self-inflicted adversity is the problem, I think. I think you're, you're seeing problems caused by your own team, by your own um, the guys next to you. But that's, you know, what, what, we, what, the, what they call themselves um, – uh, the Pirates, and they say all about the family, so maybe they can come together and uh, get back to playing football the right way. Ball on the 35, first and 15, running the ball. Ivan Johnson. Picks up some yardage, gets back to the original line of scrimmage, and a few more yards after that. And this young man's really a workhorse tonight on defense and on offense. Yeah, Ivan's uh, the, you know, one of the heartbeats of the team. Uh, he definitely gonna they're gonna go as he goes. He's gonna be he's gonna give 100 percent at all times on both sides of the ball. Ball on the 42 yard line, second and eight. Quarterback J.R. Elkins looking over to the sidelines of the shotgun formation, and he's gonna use as much time as he's needed. Has to hurry, good protection on him. And the throw is just short of the intended receiver, Terry Mitchell. Yeah, you see here, great pressure here by uh, the Rebels here. And the ball was a little bit too low. Um, unfortunately, he was being pressured there. He got the ball off, but way too low for him to make a play on the ball. Got 38 coming touch, up here right here. Go ahead. And then touchdown Terry already with two touchdowns in the game tonight. The Southpaw, J.R. Elkins, we mentioned coming in the ball game with over 1,300, 1,300 yards passing. Going to go the air again. This oh. time completed. Let's see where he goes to the sidelines, to the 20, to the 10, in for the touchdown. Yeah, but it's Coach, coming back. Hashtag touchdown Terry, and you saw the flag. Yeah, we had a, we had a block, uh, a legal block in the back there. Uh, or it looks like it could have been, you know, a uh, crackback block there. That crackback block is not allowed anymore. Back in the day, you used to be able to crack back a guy who wasn't watching, but you got to get in front of the guy, 
Unfortunately, that did not happen in that situation. So that great play that would have been a touchdown is still going to probably be a first down, but we're going to lose all that yardage. And there you see it, the call going against the Pirates. As you said, it'll be first down. Let's take a look at it again, Coach. Yeah, you see six come back here with a crackback block there. And you got him on the side, but, I mean, unfortunately, it's too close for the call there. They're going to call a penalty there most of the time in that situation. So you got to stop beating yourself up. You know, whenever you make a play, you want to make sure you do it clean. A lot of mistakes happening tonight on both sides of the ball. The Pirates, unfortunately, are hurting themselves by making these penalties. The ball spotted at midfield to the 50, first and 10. And the Pirates, you said, would have had six points. Take it back off the, the scoreboard and back at it again. But with a run play on the right side. Nice move there by the Pirates. Towns and picks up some good yardage. Yeah, great run by Towns. And I mean, I think that's what it gets back to. I like that uh, you see here, he gets the ball here. Uh, bounces it outside, makes a guy miss, and then just gets everything he possibly can in that situation. Great job blocking downfield by the Pirates as well. So he's able to pick up the necessary 10 yards to make it a first and 10. 20 to 14 is our score. Glad you could join us here on the Continental Sports Network. I'm Anthony Serenana along with Coach Andre Clinch. Elkins. Shuffling out of the pocket and is brought down just shy of the 40-yard line. That's a great job by Elkins of, take, of taking a, a big yard loss right there to a, a short yard loss right there. Making a couple guys miss there as the pocket collapses on top of him there. So it'll be second and 11 for the junior quarterback, J.R. Elkins. Ball spotted on the 41-yard line. Tonight's ball game has just had about everything. Nice long pass here. Up and off. No good. One of the players and incomplete pass. Looks like the crowd was looking for a flag there, but the official did not feel there was any impedance of him being able to make the catch. Yeah, um, yeah the, the crowd sees it one way, but let's look at the film. You know, uh, he tries to get uh, vertical here, a little bit of a back shoulder throw there, underthrown, and uh, the player never had a chance to get back to the ball there. So, almost looked like it hit the shoulder pad of the defender there. But brings up third and 11. Elkins up the middle. Bobbled, and oh, is it in the hands? Did it stay uh, in his hands? Wow. I, I think they're going to call it incomplete. Um, but that is amazing. I. I think I saw an interception, but we'll, I mean, hey, you know, let's, let's watch it ourselves. Referees called it the way they called it. A little bit behind the receiver, ball tipped in the okay, air. Yeah. Here we go. Let's, Still I mean, in the air, yeah. Yeah, I don't, I don't. It didn't hit the ground. Mm, oh, maybe, there yeah, it did. All right, All right, there. Good job, good call, good call. Well, man, we saw, I mean, we're seeing a lot of crazy plays this game. I don't know, I mean, Halloween was last week, right? I don't know what's happening. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> we got a full moon out here. I'm seeing fumbles and balls getting hit all in the air four, five, six times. And great job by the crew again, getting that slow-mo replay. Every frame we saw. Great so coverage. the ball is inside the five. So with the score 20 to 14, we're gonna take a quick break. We'll be back here on CSN. Athletes often push their bodies to the limit, completing the route, making a pass, and achieving that game-winning touchdown. That's why our team of certified athletic trainers are on the sidelines of every football game for Glen County High Schools, Brantley County High School, McIntosh County Academy, and Frederica Academy. We provide preventative care, injury treatment, concussion management, and rehabilitation so athletes can stay off the bench and get in the game. And 
good. Welcome back, everyone. 20 to 14 to score. A little short run play makes it second and eight for the Rebels. Quarterback has to scramble, and the defense for the Pirates right there to bring him down. Yeah, great job there by the Pirates. They're getting pressure on the quarterback. Um, uh, you see they, they fake blitz one way and came around the other side with Twitty. He put pressure on the quarterback, and then uh, Kayshawn and uh, looks like River got him down there. Great job by the Pirates. There was pressure. Number, number 99, River Creel. Yeah, Creel's having a great game. One bad penalty, but other than that, he's been playing out of his mind. Third and 11 with the quarterback Hayes in the end zone. Has to hurry. Got the pressure, throws it off, and the pass is incomplete. Intended receiver actually had two defenders around him, so kind of a dangerous pass there. Yeah, but great job again by uh, Ivan Johnson there. Uh, didn't let him get behind him, got right in phase. You see him recognize the play, got in phase and then look for the ball. Great job, great defense. This is exactly how we coach to do it. So brings fourth and 11. That Pirate defense again, really shining tonight. It allows the offense another opportunity here. Leading 20 to 14 on senior night, 2022. Glad you could join us here on Continental Sports Network. Kick goods off. And at the 40-yard line, that's where the Pirates will return the ball. Looks like he, he might take this it, This is our guys. superstar. Ivan Johnson again. Johnson doing it on defense and offense, special teams. Going to have to uh, give him his own hashtag for tonight's uh, game. Yeah, unfortunately, we got another block in the back there. But let's watch this run here by um, this young man. This guy's been doing it all, all night long. Always giving you a spark when you need it. All three phases of the game making plays. Ivan Johnson once again. I have to figure a, a nice hashtag that'll uh, work for him, especially for tonight. No, I understand that, man. But we have a listening audience who are, who's out there on YouTube. Man. I'm pretty sure they'll come up with something. Man. What do you guys want to call Mr. Johnson? And we definitely love to see your comments. So, yeah, definitely Coach Dre putting it out there. What do you think we could give a hashtag to Mr. Johnson with the team leading 20 to 14? Handoff, run off the ball. Not much yardage picked up there before going out of bounds. Very interesting to see Mr. Drayton in the game. I haven't seen him all game. Not really sure what's going on with him, but. Uh, it's good to see him get a carry there. You know, uh, he hasn't been in the game very much at all tonight. Yeah, that's probably the one of the first times we've seen him on the offensive play here. Yeah, obviously there's something going on that we don't know about, but, you know, uh, it's a team game, right? We've got everybody else making plays out here. Let's see if we can keep Absolutely. Going. Quarterback with the pass complete. Mr. Terry Mitchell. We may have not said Drayton's name much, but we have said Terry Mitchell quite a bit tonight, too. That is correct. We've said Terry Mitchell. We've said touchdown Terry. We've said a lot of things. Let's see what the, the, the guy's saying in the comment section. Here we go. Go Pirates. Let's go defense. Yeah, defense is really shining tonight. Tuning in from Mexico City, Mexico. Let's go Pirates. Finish. Travel with Shaq. And run up the middle. Ivan Johnson. Picks up a few yards on that one. Yeah, I guess if he's calling from Mexico City and he's saying, let's go, I guess that translates to Vamanos. <laughs> uh, I guess you would know living in California, huh? <laughs> um, listen, I mean, this is a big big time situation right here, guys. We got a fourth and two. Yeah, I saw Drayton come in the game here. Let's see what happens here with this, this snap right here. And yeah, they're really packed up in the middle there. Going with the run play. Give some protection for the run. And that was for Drayton who gets to the 30 yard line. So now he's in for a second play. Yeah, keep enough for the first down. Yeah, you see it's a key play here. You put your uh, playmaker back in the game here. Uh, and he makes a big play in a key moment. Fourth and two, you give it to the guy, the uh, Harvard commit, Jaden Drayton. I'm not sure if he has a small injury we don't know about or anything like that, but he's uh, they're definitely monitoring the snaps for sure. 
but great time making a great play there. This time the offensive line ready for another run play. Give it to Ivan Johnson, and he gets pushed back. Again, that's our workhorse tonight. Yeah, Ivan Johnson doing it all. I mean, look, look at his speed and the ability to stop and cut. Oh, gotcha. And the guy's frozen in his tracks. Being able to elude those two defenders with those moves really helped them pick up extra yardage there as it's second and three. Hey, keep going with what's working with you. Yeah. And keep it on the run play. Grady's going to always get back to the run as much as he can. He knows what his strength is in the team is. Um, and he got Towns again making a great job. Doing a great job getting that first down. The sophomore running back picking up the first down. So it's first and 10, 142. Clock winding down, remaining here in the third quarter. Interesting start up here for the second half. Things have kind of mm. uh, eased down a bit. What a big hit there by Effingham County Rebels defender there. Yeah, that guy looks like an old school linebacker coming and stepping in the pocket there, making the, making the play there. He's reading the gaps. And nobody picks him up, and he has an easy tackle there. Great job by the linebacker. Number 33, Bryson Horton, with the call, with the pickup. And we've got uh, some big guys coming in here for the Pirates. Yeah, they got a big 78 there on the left guard there, playing, doing a great job of pass block, pass protecting. Dump it off to the tight end. Easy touchdown for the Pirates. Pass is completed to Lionel Twitty. Actually, did we see a flag? I don't know if there was a flag there anywhere. There is a flag. Yeah. And that'll, let's see, bring it back. And for Coach Carrick Grady, this is definitely getting frustrating to see your team get in the end zone and have it only come back. Yeah, it's been a rough uh, rough game with the penalties. And you hear the crowd giving it to him, giving him the booze. You see Grady, his facial expression, shaking his head. Um, it's been a rough game with the penalties. But I believe that these young men are equipped to go out here and execute whether the penalties are stopping them or not. Got another look at the play Take here. Take a look at it, yeah. Uh, apparently, there was a false start. I didn't see it. Might have been, might have been Terry going to the line of the scrimmage again. We'll watch it again. Uh, they called it before when he went to, the, he went towards the line of scrimmage before he, um, uh, before the ball was snapped. And that's not elite. That's not legal. You can't do that. It's not arena football or anything like that. So, ball the 21 yard line, second and 15 after that penalty flag, brought back the touchdown. Elkins back, fires up the middle, mm. and incomplete. Yeah, he threw it through some coverage there. Um, Unfortunately, I'm not as accurate as you'd like to be in that situation, but we still got third down on right around the 20-yard uh, line. Let's watch it again. Steps up in the pocket, throws a laser, but the receiver was, wasn't quite ready. He didn't have his hands up, and maybe it was a little bit higher than it needed to be in that situation. So we got. I believe there was a penalty flag as well. Looks like they're moving him back. I think it's still third and 15. Is it still there? Okay. Yeah, Saw it's them third walking and backwards, so. I think they're just used to walking backwards. I think they're just doing it with this. <laughs> yeah. Oh, there was a penalty. It was declined. Okay. All right, here we third go. Third and 15. Yep, exactly. Let's see here. 41 seconds remaining here in the third quarter. Pirates still up. 20 to 14. Third and 15. Oh. Elkins with the pass, and let's see if they got the forward progress. Looks like they did no, to get the first down. No, the first down would have been inside the 10 to the 6-yard oh, line. you're right. Yeah, it's going to be fourth down coming forward here. You're absolutely right. I was looking at the wrong marker there. Yeah, you, you see the play here. He throws it short of the sticks, and a great job by the defensive back breaking on the ball and getting the receiver to the ground immediately. It brings in fourth and nine. Nine seconds remaining, clock winding down for the Pirates, leading 20 to 14. 
And they're going to let time expire, so we'll go into the fourth quarter with fourth down for the Pirates to elect to see what their next move will be. We saw Finneran on the field, so maybe the field goal. So we'll take a look and see. Don't go away. We'll be right back. operate as a team of teams, full-time, part-time, in or out of uniform, because greatness can come from anywhere. And when you have the right teams in place, it comes from everywhere. Join us. Jimmy John's is using legit ingredients. For a sandwich? <laughs> and sliced veggies. <laughs> Wait, what's so funny? High quality ingredients. That's a problem! Jimmy John, the sandwich of sandwiches. And welcome back. There you see the pirate flag waving. 20 to 14 is the score. And coach, uh, we start off the fourth quarter after a really interesting start to the third quarter. The ball was spotted at the 15 yard line. So if they do go for the field goal, Doing the math, it's about 32 yards for Finneran. Yeah, and third, looking at Finneran. Yeah, go ahead, Coach. No, 32 yards uh, field goal here by Finneran. Man, this is a big kick. Uh, you know, you're already you're only up six right now. They score a touchdown and kick a field goal. They already got the lead. So this is putting it up two scores here. Uh, very big kick for the for the young man. And uh, I, I guarantee you, he wants this moment. This guy loves moments like this. He's made some big kicks in the past. Hopefully, he can come through for his team right now. So looking at the numbers, according here, this is the longest is a 37-yarder. So this would fall within that realm. So we'll see here. As McLean Finneran coming in, as you said, to extend the score here to be 23 to 14. And we're glad you could join us here yeah, guys, between we're little, the bricks. Yeah, we're in a little bit of a TV timeout. We're going to come right out of here to the kick. So... Hopefully we can go out here and execute this kick here for Finneran here. Absolutely, here we go. Finneran with a 32 yarder, 37 is his longest. The kick is up. Did it make it within the uh, upright? It did. Absolutely. A 32 yard kick makes it a 23 14 ball game. I really, I really like this kid, man. He has a lot of enthusiasm. A lot of charisma, a lot of passion for the game. He loves his job, whether it's punting the ball, pinning them deep, or kicking a, a, a field goal to try to get a game, uh, the team a big time lead there. Uh, doing his job is really important. Kickers don't get enough love, man. I'm giving it all up he needs right now. Pirates class of 01 watching. Brunswick High class of 97 representing Pirate Pride from Palo Alto, California. We can't lie, he sounds exactly like Patrick Mahomes. <laughs> Why, thank you. Me? Oh, no. Coach Dre, yeah, that's right. This wouldn't be a broadcast for CSN and nobody mentioned me sounding like Patrick Mahomes. Yeah. But, um, but, yeah, man, uh, yeah, I, I enjoy calling the games, and uh, I'm sure Patrick loves playing football. We have our own things, but I'm glad he decided to sound like me as he grew up. That's great. Coach John Ford and his team here seeing the challenge here getting more and more as Brunswick continues to put more points on the board. Rebels just haven't had the opportunity. Well, they've had opportunities, second chance to third chance, just not able to really capitalize when given. Yeah, the Brunswick defense is not allowing uh, these guys to do anything. I mean, they had a great start to the game, but other than that, they've been pretty much under wraps. But we still got a game, still not, still within reach. Fourth quarter just starting here. And a big return Timothy right Brown here. Timothy Brown from the five-yard line. Yeah, from the five-yard line, Timothy Brown go to the sidelines. Out of bounds at the 35-yard line. Let's see where they spot this. And a nice run for the senior 6'3", 185-pounder. Yeah, and great. let's see how the Rebels set yeah. things up here, this opening drive here. Yeah, great job here by the uh, the Rebels here getting good field position. Yeah, you want to get it to 25 or better, they got to 35. So let's see if they can put together a drive here. Uh, in this key moment right here for the Rebels. Ball's at the 30-yard line, so it was a 
35 yard line, the ball, 30 uh, run return. And wow, look at the defense stopping the run. And once again, Lionel 20 on the tackle there. Uh, again with Kayshawn Thomas, both of these young men are having a heck of a game. I told you earlier, it's hard to run to that side with these guys who are relentless and they understand their job is to, to impose their will and that's exactly what they're doing. And a chance to see number eight, Thomas there, the senior, senior night tonight. He was part of the pregame festivities being recognized along with the cheerleaders and football players. I believe it was all the other fall sports athletes as well. Quarterback has a nice deep pass. It is and a touchdown. Ashley Thompson in the end zone for the touchdown. What a great pass. What a great play. Um, big time play there by the Rebels and a big time answer. Uh, this is a playoff game. You're not going to just let these guys run away with the game. Great job answering the Pirates there by the Rebels. Great throw by Hayes and a great catch there by um, Ashley. You see the throw. Let's take a look at that. Yeah, great hang time. Great throw. After that, it's just big boy football. Get off me. I'm going to run in the end zone real quick. Great job. Great timing. Great play. And that's how you need to answer in a situation like that. 35-yard pass play from Hayes to Thompson. And it's a three-point ball game right now. And yep. in for the extra point attempt, number 42, Jonah Strickland. Kick is up. Looks good. No, no it isn't. It oh, missed no, it. it was oh. wide. Wow. So it's still a three-point ball game, Coach. Yeah, that's exactly what you want. This is a great game. I mean, you're getting both of these guys. Well, we're going to come back with some more action. Don't go away. We operate as a team of teams full-time, part-time, in or out of uniform. Because greatness can come from anywhere. And when you have the right teams in place, it comes from everywhere. Join us. Jimmy John's is using legit ingredients. For a sandwich? <laughs> and sliced veggies. <laughs> Wait, what's so funny? High quality ingredients. That's a problem! Jimmy John's, the sandwich of sandwiches. And welcome back, everyone, to the Continental Sports Network. 23-20 is our score. I'm Anthony Serenata along with Coach Andre Clinch. And tonight on the line, a perfect record for the Pirates. A seven-game win streak for the Rebels, but mainly who is going to be number one and become region championships here after tonight's ball game. Got to be watching for the onside kick right here. Coming for the square. And there it is, Coach. Nice call. Pirates picked it up, though, and returning the ball past the 35-yard line. And the Pirates will start with decent field position here. Yeah, these guys are just deciding they're going to give up um, good field position by squibbing it instead of giving these guys a chance to return it all the way. After you already got a punt return for a touchdown, and you see how much uh, explosive these young guys are in the back there. So not a bad strategy ball. there by the Rebels. Ball was returned by number 36, Jay Sean Towns, a sophomore. So we're really getting a chance to see the future of the Pirates as well on this field. As he's got two more years to mature and just be more potent on the field here. Read the play well. That was number nine for the Rebels. That is Kayshawn Mir. Yeah, you see see the uh, pursuit there. Um, got a, had a lineman there. Uh, looked like he got stuck in the ground, hurt his leg, got a cramp or something like that, and couldn't really stop him from making a play there. Great job, though, by number nine. So a loss of yards on the play. And whistles to stop the play, rule it dead. We see flags by the sidelines there. And a penalty going against the Pirates. 
Yeah, false start there by the Pirates. I mean, if you want to take the momentum out of a team, out of the crowd, I mean, you, you start your play, lose yards, then you get a false start. I mean, they've been going backwards all night. Uh, unfortunately, um, it's very difficult if you're not going forward the entire time on offense, as we all know. So second and 21, not, the way, not where you want to be right now. Back to catch the snap is Elkins with a short pass. Stumbling a little bit at the 30, though, and getting hit hard is number 10, Harry Mitchell. Yeah, took a helmet shot there. Yeah, they ran a, a, a backdoor screen there to the receiver, a little bit high and outside, and he didn't have enough momentum to make a play there. Good job of holding the guy up and making pursuit happen there, making an attack by the Rebels. We got third and 21 now. Looking back at the schedule, Coach, the last time the Pirates had a close victory, that was in the second week against Camden County. 16 to 10 was the score. Tonight, 23-20. Johnson, yeah. nowhere to go. Yeah, yeah. Elkins uh, dropped back for a pass and the pocket collapsed really quickly, so he didn't really have anything there. Really rough drive there. You're starting off going backwards. It's not how you want to start it, so. Hopefully these guys can get things under control here um, to finish out this second half, I mean this fourth quarter here. But uh, you're gonna have to punt right now. Momentum really is shifting here in this fourth quarter. Really seeing the fire get started up here for the Rebels. Saw that on offense, now their defense really taking a stand here on this Pirate drive. Brings up a fourth and 22. Keon Wallace in the backfield to return. Great job punting there. This one definitely had the distance and the bounce. So Rebels will be taking over at the 23-yard line on their own side with 8.22. And we'll see if the momentum continues to shift for the Rebels, Coach. We saw them light the spark on offense. And on this last defensive series for them, they were able to hold the Pirates see if the offense continues the momentum. Yeah, I mean, they, they definitely have the momentum, but I, I got to again give a shout out to uh, Mr. Finneran, man, uh, number 80, uh, the kicker. He's uh, doing his job. I mean, you know, he had the one mistake where he, he had a low snap and fumbled the ball there a little bit and threw the ball, but every kick has been dead on, um, accurate, where it's supposed to be. Great punt there to get the field position swung back the other way. Um, and if that defense keeps playing the way they've been playing, uh, with the exception of that last pass, that long pass there, I think that the Pirates are right where they need to be. You see the student station getting getting into it, though. See that? Oh, to Anthony. Absolutely. And just a scoring update: the Terrors are leading Lakeside 35 to 20 in the fourth quarter. So there's a little score update for you. Man, that's good to hear, man. The, Pirate, the uh, Terrors have definitely finished their season off a lot better than they started, and uh, that's what you want to see from. Um, both of these teams from Glen County uh, playing good football, finishing down the stretch before they go to the playoffs next year, next week rather. Than. And so with 8.22 remaining in the game, the Rebels they can need to take a stand here and see what happens. Trailing by three, plenty of time left in the game for both teams to either jump ahead for the Pirates or for the Rebels to Come from behind here. And running the ball up the middle. It's Evans. Yeah, Evans. He's been the workhorse. Yeah, Evans again. Uh, running the ball. And tackled again by, I mean, who else? Number seven, final 20. 20 again. So second and six, four yard pickup for the Rebels. Quarterback Nate Hayes with Evans behind him there. Looking at the sidelines, see what hit coach John Ford in his second year. We mentioned seven game winning streak on the line as well for the Rebels and the run. Picked up a few yards on that play. We'll see where they spot it. And there's the stop by Kayshawn Thomas. Love watching this young man play. I mean, he's shedding blocks, making tackles in the backfield. Uh, he's a man that won't be stopped right now. So it was a one-yard pickup, brings up third and five. Official signaling timeout. 
Not sure who made the call though, was it? Well, let's see, it looks like there might be a timeout call by the Seven Rebels, let's see. No, oh. oh, sideline warning. Guess the Pirates might have been infringing too much on the, the field there. So let's stop play, but third and five, here we go. Official says, let's, let's keep moving. Quarterback Hayes, back to pass, goes to the sidelines and overthrows the intended receiver, was for Keon Wallace. Exactly senior 6-3. Right yeah. A bit of an overthrow. Again, that's a miscommunication between the receiver and the quarterback there. He had a different plan in, in mind. You see Coach um, trying to make sure everybody stays locked into the game there. But uh, great job by the Pirates getting another stop um, in the key moment. I mean, you want to make sure these guys don't have the opportunity to go down and score, you take the lead or tie the game there, and, and now you force another fourth down. So with 7.06 remaining in the game, fourth and five. And the kick team in for the Rebels. And they're hoping to just have their defense come in oh. and stop the offense. Wow. Terrible, terrible, terrible shank on that one, but great job, great for the Pirates there. I don't think that, that ball uh, went uh, to the 41 yard line there. So 41 yard line there for the ball. The Pirates going out, going into the end zone. Yeah, that ball had a mind of its own. They just kept sailing over there, off yeah. the sidelines. Yeah, sometimes you punt the ball and it goes to the side of your foot, and that's the result you get. You see the cheerleaders out here tonight, man. A lot of team spirit for both teams. We got both bands in the stands. Um, both uh, crowds got a lot of fans on both sides, and that's what you want to see, man. It's basically a playoff game, and uh, everybody's out here from the communities representing and giving all these kids all the love they deserve. I'd love to see that. And of course, have more of your social media comments. Futures, hashtag future state champs. And with lead, the lead 23-20, it could be possible. Locked in from Dallas, class of 14. Let's go number 10. And the run play is stopped. And the run was number two, Ivan Johnson. Yeah, you see the run here by Johnson trying to get outside, but great pursuit there by the Rebels. Didn't allow them to get any yards at all. They're keying in um, on every run um, to the opposite side of the running back every time. And they're doing a great job of putting pressure on the backfield there. And if you're head coach John Ford, that's exactly you're hoping to see. After you kick off the ball, your defense takes care of business and leaves you enough time to come back. Here's the pass completed at the 40 to the 30. Nice catch there to Terry Mitchell, just shy of the 30 yard line. It's going to be very close to a first down. I think they're going to mark it a little bit short, but great job there. Second and 15, he gets, a, he gets 14 yards there to make him third and one in this situation. Great job. Terry Mitchell making another great play. So it comes down to this third and one play. On the nice pass from quarterback Elkins to hashtag touchdown Terry. Yeah, only situations normally they give it to Drayton, so I don't know what they're going to do. Let's see what happens here. Have some options in the backfield this time. Hand off the ball to Jamarius Towns, and he gets pushed back. Yeah, uh, great Big job of pursuit by the linebacker there. Let's watch it one more time here. Uh, Jayden's the lead block, and, he, and uh, this, the linebacker shed his block, made a guy miss, and uh, got in the backfield, made a play. Now we got fourth down coming up right here for the Pirates. Let's see if they go for it on fourth down, or they go with it. Big stand by the Rebels defense there. Let's see if they can do it again on fourth and four. They got Terry Mitchell in the slot here. Off the 35 yard line. And looking at the sidelines to get the call from Coach Elkins looking. Not yeah. sure how long they have left on the game. On They're the, probably uh, going to call a timeout here. here. They're going to call a timeout here. They had one second at the play clock. They tried to uh, get them to jump off sides. Didn't really work out. So they're going to call a timeout and then reassess and decide they want to go for it or punt in this situation here. So that leaves the Pirates with one timeout left in the game. The Rebels have three. 
So it's fourth and four. Let's see what Coach Garrett Grady has to say to his team here. What uh, what do you think's going through their minds, Coach, and what are they drawing up here with fourth and four? Uh, I think you look at your play sheet, you go with the play that you run um, in, in this situation more often than not. You know, uh, whatever your third and short plays are, um, the ones that you love the most, uh, you want to go to those. I say third and short because those are the plays you practice over and over and over again. This is a fourth and short, but it's the same scenario, same yardage and everything like that. So I would just, I mean, I would just go with my bread and butter and what works for me. And, uh, and for the Rebels, what do you tell uh, your coach John Ford? Oh, I'm, I'm doing what I've been doing all game. I'm stacking the box, daring the team to run against me, and I'm just blitzing. I mean, they've been putting the pressure on Elkins all, all night, and then every time they do that, they've been getting positive results for them. So if I'm the uh, FKM Rebels, I'm putting the pressure on the Pirates. I'm blitzing off the edge. I'm doing as many stunts as I need to get people in the backfield. And then if I'm the Pirates, I'm going to drop the play that I need to get uh, my playmakers the ball in and see what happens. I want to see the ball in uh, Terry Mitchell's hands, or I want to see uh, Jaden Drake get the ball. That's what I'm looking for. All right. And if you're in the student section, you do exactly what they're doing, cheering on and giving the team that energy to make the big play. Here we go. Short little pass. Jaden Drake. It's caught. Drayton gets the first down. It's a great play call there. Great play call there. You got him, you got him hidden over there in the H-back slot. And then after that, who's running with number 18? Who's running with number 18 all year? You need a big play, you go see your best playmaker. That first down definitely uh, was needed for the team. And big time moment for a big time player there. Puts the ball at the 29 yard line. And you know, coach, when you were saying we, we, the Pirates would just go with a play that they're familiar with and that works with them. And you know, Jaden Drayton's name comes up with these big plays like this. Yeah, he's a senior leader. I mean, you know, that's the guy you want to have, have the ball in his hands as often as possible at key moments. So great job by the Pirates executing there. New set of downs, moving the ball up the middle with the run play, picking up maybe a yard of that. That was number four, Jamarius Towns, the sophomore running back. Looks like he picked up a yard. Yeah, Towns has had a great game. Philly already over 100 yards. Been Second doing a lot for this guy, these guys the last few games. Uh, and uh, he's helping these guys finish this thing strong. So we got three minutes left in the, in the fourth. Let's see if they can finish it. And there's your offensive line, the big boys right there, protecting Elkins and the run. They're doing a great job. Second and nine. This time going to the left side. That is our buddy Ivan Johnson. Ivan Johnson on the carry. He picks up some yards. Second yard pick up to 21. He's going to force a timeout in this situation. Ivan Johnson with a great run there. You see him with the burst and the energy to get outside and get as much as he can in that situation. He picked up seven yards. So there's the young man we mentioned. Tonight, give him a hashtag of his own. He's really wearing down that Rebel side. Just trying to figure out what they can do to stop him, but not only on offense, but defense as well, and special teams. He's just been all over tonight's game. Yeah, he's been everywhere. You know, um, offense, defense, returning. I mean, he's been doing it all, and uh, I mean, that's what you want from see in leadership, you know? And uh, I love to see that from uh, these guys. Everybody needs to step up in a game like this, and you need the seniors, the guys who've been through it the most, to finish it off for you. And that's what I've seen from Drayton and Ivan Johnson in those last couple of plays. You gotta love that if you're a pirate. I know we solicited uh, hashtag ideas from our social media viewers, but if one's not able to be thought of, maybe we could go with uh, one that I would vote for with Mr. Uh, Johnson. He's everywhere, he's just hashtag ninja. He's the ninja. Just everywhere. <laughs> he really is everywhere. He really is uh, doing all things for, for, for this team. Uh, you got to love a guy who's, who's going to put his heart out there and feel like that. And high school football is all about heart. He has it. Absolutely. So ball just spotted short of the 20 yard line. And now we have whistles, and it looks like there's even a flag back there by the 30. Okay. Wow. This is pretty frustrating if you're a power here. I mean, you know, 
they're not even, they're set, not even ready to make a play. The play calling, I don't know who he called it on, but they called it a false start to take him off right there. Take him, uh, take him back five more yards there. And that was from the far side, at least when I saw the flag. So the official on the far sideline tossed the yellow flag out. Procedure It'll be the a procedure call against the Pirates. Down, Coach down. Garrett Grady, I think he's he's kind of yeah. just beyond angry, beyond, you know, just dumbfounded. I don't know. He's just trying to figure out what the officials are seeing tonight. Here's the pass. Yeah. A lot of pressure there on uh, on Elkins there as he sailed the ball a little bit too high there. So now we're at a fourth and seven. Another decision making time for uh, for Coach. And I think they're going to probably go for it. And I'm sure the frustration with for Coach is, you know, not only do we have an opponent that you know we're fighting against. We're kind of fighting against ourselves with these mistakes and then a little bit of a battle with, you know, the officials and some of the calls that are being called on them as well. Yeah. So fourth and seven, Pirates going for it. The pass Big up the middle. Big time play. Terry and Mitchell, who? ladies and gentlemen. Absolutely. Big game, Terry Mitchell, with the crucial catch to get the first down. You gotta love it, man. Let's watch this replay, man. Guy in his face, throws the inside post. Terry Mitchell uses his body to shield off the defender and makes a great play. First down, Pirates. Big time play in a big time moment. Fourth and seven, what a play. Elkins to Mitchell. A, a 21 yard pass play. First down and goal from the five. This time, get the handoff. Number two, of course, Ivan Johnson. Ambles up the middle, picks up a few yards there. Johnson and Johnson and Johnson and Johnson, right? I mean, it's always Johnson. <laughs> man. This guy is everywhere. Got to love his, his uh, heart and how hard he's playing for his team on both sides of the ball. And the work ethic of this young man and the ability to maintain the energy this late into the season as well, it's definitely noticeable that, I mean, weight training, strength training's all working well for him. And um, this time with the run, and look who goes in for the touchdown. Yes, sir. Jaden Drayton. Gotta love this young man. You guys have great energy, great spirits. He's been limited all game for whatever reason. He's still coming through to make great plays when the team needs him. Direct snap right in the end zone. Touchdown, Pirates. Got to love it. We haven't said his name too much tonight, but in the crucial plays, his name and number have come up. He goes in for the touchdown. 29-20 is the score. Finneran in for the extra point attempt with 154 remaining in the game. Kick is up, splits the uprights, it's good. And so Brunswick with the touchdown, the extra point, takes the 10 point lead, 30 to 20. Don't go away, more football action here on CSN. Athletes often push their bodies to the limit, completing the route, making a pass, and achieving that game-winning touchdown. That's why our team of certified athletic trainers are on the sidelines of every football game for Glen County High Schools, Brantley County High School, McIntosh County Academy, and Frederica Academy. We provide preventative care, injury treatment, concussion management, and rehabilitation so athletes can stay off the bench and get in the game. And 
welcome back everyone to a beautiful Glen County Stadium with the Pirates in the lead, 30 to 20 after a five yard touchdown run by Mr. Jaden Drayton. Coach, we've seen it all tonight. Good action and a lot of adversity and now we've got the Rebels with the ball returning. Number three, Keon Wallace goes to the 30 yard line, 35, pushing up forward to the 40 past the 40 and out of bounds, big return. Yeah, big time return. I mean, it looks like it was it was not looking good at the start there, a little bit of a fumble on the uh, the, uh, the initial return and then he found the gap and found some lanes and got up to the 40 yard line. Great job, great return. So if you're the Rebels with 138 remaining, you want to get the quick score and then try to make something happen to get the ball back. Yeah, you got to try to get a quick score and try to get an onside kick, but the score is the first thing first, you know. Let's take a look at one of our social media comments. That's one for your Granny J. That's the way we do it. Number 18, J. Dre. And special shout out to the CSN team for, for providing this opportunity for folks to tune in all over the world. I hope we can continue this next season. Travel with Shaq. I'm with you. I'm with you, Shaq. Great crew here tonight. and. Great to be able to work with a fine group of professionals. Here's the short pass. Completed and rolling around and down at the 40 yard line. Coach, looks like the Rebels are really making a uh, drive here. Yeah, they're gonna have to get back on the ball right away and get as many plays off as possible here. So you don't want, you're, you're fighting against the clock more than you're fighting against the score right now. So let's we'll see how they keep the ball moving and their clock management. And a whistle to stop playing a flag. Have two uh, timeouts remaining for the Rebels. Ball start this time against the Rebels. You hear the, and I hear the Brunswick crowd. Oh yeah, the very sarcastic uh, crowd of the uh, Brunswick crowd Pirates. They're clapping there for the false start penalty finally called against the other team. <laughs> like sometimes I'm watching games with my mother. She would say, "I just don't like how happy he looked when he threw that penalty." You know what I mean? Like you, you don't want to feel like they're, play, they're playing against you. You know what I'm saying? So. Love the sarcasm Absolutely. there by the, by the power crowd there. It's quite funny. So first and 15 so with the penalty. Clock stop, 117. And the official says, let's get things going. Quick pass to the sideline. That's what they're doing is stop the clock, but he did not get out of bounds in time. Ashley Thompson, so the clock continues, and I believe the Rebels are going to eat up a well, actually, they're going to just stop the clock to move the chains as a 17-yard gain, get the first down. Yeah, that's correct. Great job by the defensive back there, holding the guy, not letting him get out of bounds in that situation. So we're under a clock minute now. Clock continues to go now. Yep, under a minute. Quarterback has to shovel, gets to the 20, and slides short of the 15. Clock's going to continue to go, though. Two timeouts still remaining for the Rebels. Let's see when they decide to use them. And the clock has stopped. And that continues to go on with 50 seconds. Now you're looking at see quarterback with the yep. pass incomplete, so that'll stop the clock. Stop clock on the incomplete pass. So now they're probably going to take some shots at the end zone in this situation. Um, you know, take a couple shots at the end zone. If you get a touchdown, you got enough time at least to, to try to go back and score after the onside kick if you get that back as well. So. Odds are definitely not in their favor, but they're going to give it everything they got to finish this game off, and it's up to the Pirates to try to end it on their side of the ball as well. Second and 10, ball at the 18, quarterback back. You said looking for the end zone, and pass is incomplete. Yeah, underthrown. I'm not quite sure why they're not throwing towards the end zone there. I guess they don't want to throw interception, but uh, you're going to have to get the ball up if you're going to give the chance, a guy a, a chance to score on a slant there. So we got a third and 10 here. Um, Still not over, 37 seconds left in the game. Absolutely, the way the game's been going on tonight, anything is possible. You can see a close of a quarterback, Nate Hayes, the junior quarterback, looking off to the side there, and big. is crushed in the big sack. Big time sack there. Great pursuit. River has been all over the field tonight. I mean, so the Another. Rebels utilizing their timeout, stop the clock. 28 seconds remaining in the game. 
Yeah, the game looks like it's winding down. Looks like the Pirates are going to get away with a victory here, most likely, unless we see something crazy. But I don't know. We've seen crazy things all night. Um, it's, <laughs> yes, it's, you're right. But, I mean, you know, crazy or not, I mean, the ability to stay focused through all the adversity, the ability to stay locked in and, and keep picking up your teammates whenever they make mistakes, and the ability to never let one play decide the rest of the game, it's been really great to see from the Pirates. And the leadership from the seniors on senior night has also been great to see. So, um, we've had a great game. It's been a great season, and uh, I can't wait to see what the Pirates do in the postseason. But so far, this has been a, a blessing to, to watch and be a part of, to call, and I really am excited to see uh, you know what these young men do to finish this special year off. And now we're going to get the crowd getting loud, give these guys all the love they deserve. It's been a great year. Let's see if they can finish Absolutely. it out with it. Yeah, let's see if they can finish it out correctly. So with 28 seconds remaining, fourth and 14 for the Rebels. Quarterback Hayes fades back, has to scramble, throws the pass off into the end zone, and it's caught in the end zone. And that is number three, Keon Wallace, for the oh touchdown. Oh, my gosh. What a great play. I got to say, man, this quarterback, you know, Mr. Um, Mr. Hayes, Mr. Nate Hayes, he's been doing a great job all night of just doing everything he can for his team. In this situation, you see the pressure in his face. Miss, makes two guys miss, basically, and just throws the ball up. Enough air under the ball for the receiver to get a catch and a touchdown in this situation. An 18-yard touchdown pass. The yeah. kick is up. And it's good, so we have ourselves a 30 to 27 ball game with 19 seconds remaining. Coach, you said it, anything can happen. Yeah, I mean, uh, I'm not surprised tonight. I mean, we, un we saw it was a full moon. We saw 17 fumbles and 38 penalties. I don't know, I mean, like, it's been a wild game. And, um, you know, for this player to make this play um, in this situation, give his, chance, his team a chance is, is, is something we should have expected. I mean, great job. Great job keeping it alive. Now we got to get our hands team together for the Pirates. If you're the Pirates, you're going to get your onside kick specialist ready um, if you're the Rebels. And uh, we're going to see something, you know, we're going to see what happens if you can execute down the stretch. So the game's not over until the zeros are all the way on the cr across, the, across the board here. So three-point game, 19 seconds left, onside kick on the way. Uh, we're going to watch it to the end. You're getting a great game, guys, if you're watching it anywhere um, across the world, as you guys have already been saying. So let's see how it finishes. Keon Wallace getting a nice high five and a hug from head coach John Ford of that big touchdown play. Let's see here what happens. He said, coach, with the onside kick, that is going to be the job of number 42, Jonas Strickland, who is the kicker for the team. So let's sit back and see what happens. 19 seconds remaining. Last be. final game of the year. Comes down to a flag here as well. We got a flag on the field. I think they think there's 12 guys out there. And again, just goes on to the interesting evening we're having. Yeah, I'm not sure exactly what happened there. Equipment situation, I don't know why they took Towns out in that situation. But, you know, uh, if you're the kicker in this situation, we're talking uh, what you're trying to do. You're trying to find the right guy hit the onside kick too. It's, I mean, that penalty is not good in this situation because you're giving them more yards. They do get the onside kick, and now they're closer to the end zone. So ultimately, the most important thing is getting on the ball in this situation. So the kicker trying to find the right person to kick it to. Maybe he'll miss it. Maybe he'll uh, have the ball bounce off his leg or something. Um, and then you're trying to get your, t your guys the best chance to go get this recovery. So football game is not over. We've seen it all. We've seen it all, and we're not quite done yet. Let's see what happens here. Absolutely. So the ball placement is now accurate. And here comes the onside kick. It's a great kick. Looks like the Rebels recovered. Of course they did, right? There's Coach John Ford, everyone on the sidelines for the Rebels. They really made that one look easy. Textbook. Perfect. 
Yeah, great onside kick. I mean, I've, I've seen a lot of great onside kicks, but this kick right here, for it to stay low like that, roll 10 yards, it's unfortunate that um, our hands team didn't get on that ball. So they kicked it to the right person. The person who is responsible for getting on that ball should not let it go 10 yards. If it goes 10 yards, the other team can get on top of the ball. Now we have a situation where you have 19 seconds left, the game's not over, and uh, you know, you gotta keep them out of the end zone right now. And the ball is placed in some pretty good territory there. A 44-yard line. Hayes back. 18 seconds on the clock. Great clock. job. The pass is incomplete. Breaking on the ball. This young man has had a rough game all day. But he makes a play when he needs to for his team, and that's what you love to see. Look at Big him breaking on the ball. Big time play there. by the Pirates. Number 21. Tavian Gadsden. Yeah, Mr. Gadsden's had a gruff game. A couple penalties going against him, but he's ready to make a play right now when he needs it. Here we go, 13 seconds. Hayes with the pass in the Interception. Air. Oh, he dropped it. it. Almost picked off with six seconds remaining. <laughs> oh, Gadsden, great job. Yeah. Of, great job of staying in, in phase and pursuit. Uh, they're in quarters right there. They all dropped back for the pass, and it looks like the receiver gave up on the route, and he did not. Unfortunately, he couldn't bring it in to seal the game there. We have six seconds left. We're going to see one more play most likely here. Let's see if the Pirates can get him on the ground for a sack or if we can get an interception or a knockdown. Let's see what happens. Anything but a catch is great. And if they still have enough time, they still have that one timeout left. Uh, this is here it right we here. Here we go. Quarterback Campbell, three seconds with a sack. And that's how we end it, guys. And a big play by the big man. Number 90, Jordan Jimmerson with the big tackle. You gotta love it, man. Regional champs, what a great year for the Pirates. 10 and 0 on the season, 6 and 0 in the region. Regional champs, they're gonna host uh, the uh, three or four seed out of the region one there. Great job by the Pirates, and a great finish, great game, great composure. Uh, it's been uh, all the drama this year. I'd love to see it, love to see it. Great job. Okay. Congratulations to Coach Garrett Grady and the Brunswick Pirates. 22 game win streak, regular season games. Amazing. And what a way to have this game end. It came down to the last remaining seconds. And uh, just see what a close ball game it was and the adversity that the Pirates had to take. You're right, Coach. We saw ourselves a great ball game tonight. Yeah, I, I, I got to say I'm very proud of uh, the Pirates and their organization for everything they've done this year. Um, the way they've handled themselves, the way they've made it all about the family. Um, before, the, before the game started, watching the unity walk and watching them walk all across the field arm in arm, these guys are definitely together. And they're going to need to stay together as they go into the playoffs. But all in all, it's been a great year um, for the Pirates. Great job calling it with you guys. You guys did a great job. Um, as usual, Anthony, man, I love you guys, and I'm really excited to be doing this with you guys. Absolutely, and uh, tonight's ball game, if you say we take it away with Brunswick Senior Night, hashtag family from our family here at CSN to you. Thank you for watching all season long. We hope we'll be back with you again next year. Great ball game tonight. Here's our awesome, amazing crew as we say goodnight to y'all. We'll absolutely see you next year. Great group of guys bringing you the angles, the replays, the slow-mos. Hey, there he is, Coach Andre Clinch and myself. I'm Anthony Serenata. Thank you so much for allowing us to join you every week. There's the truck, the guys that make it happen. And again, from all of us here at CSN, thank you so much. It's been fun to read your comments and see exciting football just like this. Coach Dre, it's uh, been great. It was a fun year with you. August to November went by quick. All right, All right, right everyone. So have a great night, Coach. And for the crew, Coach Clinch, I'm Anthony Serenata. Thank you so much and have a great night with the Pirates victory and the